I am Bob Phillips with Texas Country Reporter. With all the uncertainty in today's world, it's nice to be able to count on someone to be there when we need them most. For 67 years, the West Texas Rehabilitation Center has provided treatment and hospice care for those who need it, regardless of their financial circumstances. Tonight, I'm proud to welcome you to West Texas Rehab's 51st annual telethon. You'll be entertained by some talented performers and get to see the rehab in action as you watch the heartwarming stories of the people they serve. Let's go now to the convention center in Abilene, Texas, where Charlie Chase is standing by to tell you more about the telethon and this amazing place. Take it away, Charlie. All right, thank you, Bob. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rehab 2021. Thanks to the audience for being here today, and they're socially distanced, of course. This is our 51st annual telethon to benefit the West Texas Rehabilitation Center. Now, the rehab is certainly something to be very proud of. They have a wonderful history. The rehab center was established in 1953, now serves about 650 men, women, and children every day from three locations in Abilene, Ozona, and San Angelo. Now, throughout tonight's show, you'll be hearing about the treatment, therapy, and many wonderful services the center provides to your neighbors in West Texas because of the support of generous donors like you. We also have some terrific success stories, too, to share. Now, certainly this past year has been a challenging one for all of us, including the patients and families served by the Rehab Center. You'll notice that during tonight's telethon, we have taken extra precautions to protect our patients, employees, cast and crew for Rehab 2021, and of course, our audience during this pandemic, as recommended by local, state, and national health care authorities. No groups of children will be appearing on stage tonight, and we are practicing social distancing and wearing masks whenever possible. We're also limiting the number of people backstage and on stage. You can find more information about our COVID precautions on the Rehab Center website. Now, our first telethon was held in 1971. I'm proud to say that we have raised at least $1 million at the telethon for each of the last 25 straight years. And we sincerely thank all of you who have been a part of those efforts. Certainly, yes, indeed. Well, tonight, we're going for another successful year with your help and with the help of another fantastic lineup of entertainment, including an encore performance by Runaway June and the talented young singer and songwriter, Ryan Page. Now, missing for the first time since 2004, is the legendary singer-songwriter, native Texan, and dear friend, Red Stegall, who is at home recovering from, yep, the coronavirus, but happy to report he's doing great, almost back to his abnormal self. He's a real hero to all of us here at the rehab organization. Now, among his accolades, Red's a proud member of the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame. Red, we know you're watching and we certainly wish you a speedy and full recovery. And I guarantee he is watching because his band, the boys in the bunkhouse are here to entertain us in his absence. So uh, he's got to be keeping an eye on their behavior tonight. So filling in for Red in his duties as co-host for the telethon is a former PRCA rodeo cowboy and world champion tie down roper, a new member of the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame and husband of telethon regular Jennifer Smith, Strand Smith is here tonight. Hello, Strand. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Good to see you, sir. Yes, sir. We, I, you know, I'm used to, Charlie, I'm used to kind of uh, not being out the front and, and being the front man like uh, Red is, but I've got some awful big shoes to fill. I'm used to bringing up the drag, so I'll see if I can do my best tonight. And, and I know you'll make be Make him proud. We miss him. Good to have you on board here, yes, Strand. Sir. All thank right. You. So, my friends, the team's in place. You're with us. Let's get things rolling right now with another native Texan with platinum and gold albums, top 10 songs, and number one hits like No Doubt About It and Wink. He is one of the best, most genuine entertainers in the business. Proud to call him my longtime friend. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Neil McCoy. <laughs> having to read all that. Hey, I was born dirt poor on a dead-end country road. Jacksonville, Texas. My every dream was to just grow up and go. And like a silent song goes by, God's called my name. And so I turned that country road into 
so glad to be back here. I will tell you, last year was a crazy year. I won't talk a bunch. I've got a habit of doing that. But since we're on TV and live at the same time with people in here, that's weird to us. We're a small group. We don't, we don't get a bunch of cameras and stuff. So if I ain't looking at the right place at the right time and looking to them and I forget about y'all at home, please forgive me. I just see them and I can't see y'all, but I know you're there. Welcome back to, uh, this is our third time to be at the West Texas Rehab and we're honored to be here. This is pretty close to the last show that we played last year. Uh, and then we ended up taking the whole year off. But one more time, on, um, Charlie mentioned Red Stegall. And, man, he is, uh, he is one of the staples here at the West Texas Rehab. We all miss him and love him dearly. So, Red, get better, buddy. I know you are getting better. We're going to do another song. I'll talk to you a little later on. Charlie's going to come out and visit with me. This was our first. Let me thank all you people in this room, all you people at home, uh, I'd been in the business a long time, never could get anything going, released a whole bunch of singles, couldn't get anything up the charts, and finally, 93, when Atlantic Records was fixing to drop me, they signed me to one more album. We changed producers and recorded this song. It came out as our first song off of that album. It's the name of the album also. It's called No Doubt About It, and this was our very first number one song in the United States of America. And oh my gosh, just in time. If you know it, sing along. Sing along with us at home. We'd love to hear you. Just like every lock's got to have a key And the river goes looking for the sea And when you plant a seed, it reaches for the sky It's just the way it is, nobody wonders why Like coffee needs a cup, you know that it ain't much good without it We were meant to be together, no doubt about it 
Like a hammer and a nail, socks and shoes. Or we go hand in hand like rhythm and blues. What good is a man if he hasn't got a dream about as good as a car with no gasoline? You're the one I'm dreaming of. Got to have your lover, can't live without him. We were meant to be together, no doubt about it. No, there ain't no doubt about it. Something was missing, it was making me blue. But all I ever needed was you. Just like every lock's got to have a key, every river goes looking for the sea. And when you plant a seed, it reaches for the sky, it's just the way it is. Girl, with you and I, like coffee needs a cup. You know that it ain't much good without it. We were meant to be together, no doubt about it. And no, there ain't no doubt about it. This thing feels good. You know the words here or there or where we are? Sing loud. People look at you straight. Like a hammer and a nail, socks and shoes. Or we go hand in hand. What good is a man? Hasn't got a dream about as good as a car. You're the one I'm dreaming of. Got to have your lover, can't live without it. We were meant to be together, no doubt about it. Thank y'all. We'll be hanging around all night. I think we're in five different sections. Thank you very much. We'll see. We're gonna do a lot of music. Charlie, you get to do all the hard stuff. How about it for my band up here, y'all? Nice round of applause for these guys. You'll be seeing them all night. Thank you for bringing us to West Texas Rehab. We'll be back shortly. Enjoy all the other musical talent. Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause. Neil McCall. I'll see you, Charlie. Good luck. Follow that. Yeah. He's basically a one-man show. We forgot to tell the guy on the spotlight, keep up with him. <laughs> Good luck the rest of the night. Thanks to Neil McCoy for being our headliner again this year. He's wonderful. And special thanks to RHS Construction for sponsoring the first hour of tonight's telethon. And now to one of my favorite parts of the telethon. I'm always impressed by the noise that we hear. No, I'm always impressed by the examples we see and hear each year of how the rehab center cares for its patients and families with treatment that really changes their lives. And here to share with us the story of one of those patients is a former news anchor and TV host who is now a member of the rehab family. Please say hello to Braid Blanks. Hi, Braid. Hey, Charlie, it's so good to see you this year. I'm so glad you're here and I'm happy to be here tonight. I love that we get to highlight the reason why we do this. It is so important to see the faces of the people that we help. You're about to meet a young man named Julian Potter, and I am not exaggerating when I tell you this is probably one of the most impactful stories that I have ever had the privilege to share. What he has been through and where he is now will leave you speechless, and I hope that it inspires you. Take a look. When I was swimming to the boat, I told my friend I was going to die. I thought I was. That was going through my mind. It was the 21st of May, and it was about 4.30 in the afternoon, I guess. I was at work, and I got a call, and it was Julian's friend. He says, I'm here at the lake with your son. There's been an accident. You need to get here. You know, you need to get here quick. May 21st, that was the day Brian Potter's life changed. That was the day his son Julian almost lost his leg and nearly lost his life. Whenever I was seeing all the blood around me in the water, that's when I knew I was like, like it was, it was bad, and that's when I knew I was like, all right, I got hit by the propeller. So I picked up my leg, and my skin was just hanging over my arm, and it was just blood everywhere. It was just unfathomable. It, you just can't, when, in that situation, there's, 
you don't want to think the worst, but the worst is right in front of your face. Several hours later, they told me that um, they had done a uh, femoral artery transplant and that he was going to have to be airlifted to Lubbock. They still didn't know. Um, they didn't know if he was going to survive through the night. They didn't know if he was going to keep his leg. Against all odds, Julian was alive the next morning, and even more miraculously, he still had his leg. For months, he and his father would stay in the intensive care unit before starting the painful road to recovery. Not long after getting back to San Angelo, they found the hope they desperately needed, the West Texas Rehab Center. I kid you not, it was one day to the next. I, I, I found out about it, I called, they said come in, and they got Julian in right away. It wasn't wait a couple of weeks to get an appointment and do a thousand pages of paperwork. It wasn't, it was just, hey, we're here, we're gonna help, let's get this done. And that's exactly what they did. Call it luck, call it fate, call it serendipity. But the man waiting to help Julian was someone who had been in the same devastating situation his senior year of high school. Same deal, I missed the entire football season. I had to come back last two games. Um, and I had physical therapy. Um, it really helped me through that. And now that I can be that person for Julie, it just really motivates me to do it. He reminds me a lot of myself. And, and he wants it, you know. It was meant like, it was like we we're meant to meet each other because his story about him his last, him being able to play his last two games after his injury. I, I love Steven, he's like a, I guess I, he feels like a second dad to me. It makes me feel like, he cares for me. I love him, he's a great guy. The progress these two have made together has shocked everyone, including doctors and surgeons who said Julian would be in a wheelchair for at least six months. The sky's the limit. He's got, he's gotten this far and doing as well as he is and there's nothing going to stop him. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. Um, he's already proven that even if they say he's not, he will. Honestly, I don't know um, how we would have, I don't know how we would have gotten where we are right now if it wasn't for West Texas Rehab. And thanks to the financial support from the community, anyone who needs care is going to get it. I didn't have means of getting my son taken care of without turning my life upside down, our lives, because we would have had, I mean, we wouldn't have anything anymore. We'd, you know, we'd be in a bad situation. And because of West Texas Rehab, we're not. Because yes, I still have a whole bunch of bills that I'm gotta figure out what to do. But that doesn't matter right now. I don't have to worry about somebody not getting approved for visits. You know, with Julian, I told them I'm going to be seeing you for a long time. And I can tell somebody that without in the back of my head saying, God, I hope their insurance approves this. You know what I mean? And having to think, oh, I got to call this insurance and really fight for this kid because we're, we're already fighting for you. It's, you know, we have people that, that help us. And by donating, you know, we can tell Julian, hey, dude, you're, we got you. We're going to take care of you. And somehow, through all the suffering, the potters have chosen to find beauty from the pain. When people ask, I can tell them my story, and if they know someone that's been in an accident is down, they can tell them my story, and maybe help that person that they know that's hurt. Don't be so afraid of dying that you forget to live. So go out there, have fun, do what you do. Just because a freak accident happens doesn't mean you should stop doing things that you love. Get back up and keep fighting. Don't give up. It's not an option. I don't have time to feel sorry for myself. No. I always, I just, I can't. I, I want to get back to being, like having a normal life or like it was before the accident. Julian and I want to try to help people see that it's not over, it's not done. You can, you can come back, you can get better. We gotta start thinking of each other and taking care of each other across the board. And anybody that can give to West Texas Rehab should because it is, there, it, there's a good cause here. There's a lot of good happening here um, and we need it. 
Wow, those are words to live by. I don't think I don't think any of us could have picked a better thing to hear right now. We were so looking forward to having Julian and his dad Brian here tonight, but as with most things this year, uh, COVID has thrown a monkey wrench in our plans and they are in quarantine right now. Instead, we are joined by someone who knows them both very well. Ms. Gina Carr, she is the Director of Adult Services at San Angelo, the rehab center there. And uh, Gina, we're so glad that you were able to come tonight because I know that you do know them very well. And uh, I can tell you're emotional by Julian's story. Tell me a little bit uh, about your connection with them. Um, I've just gotten to watch him really progress. Um, when he came to us, he was on crutches. And now he can run. Um, he's got a lot of fight. He stayed positive. His father is amazing and was with him the whole time. And, you know, without that support, he never would have gotten as far as he did. I remember uh, interviewing him and as well as uh, Stephen, the therapist he was working with, and they were all so emotional and you could tell that there was such a relationship and a bond. And I think personally, that's what sets the rehab apart. One of the many things, but I'd love to hear from you uh, working there every day. What makes this place so wonderful? I mean, we're all very committed to what we do. Um, I mean, every day we, we enjoy meeting the patients. We enjoy um, getting to have those relationships. You know, it is not a 15 minute visit. It's 45 minutes and it's over often a very long period of time. So we really do get to know them. We get to understand, you know, what drives them, where they wanna get to. Um, it's, it's a very rewarding career. And you know, we, we, uh, I get to see that so many times over and over when I do these stories. I just hear how grateful they are to all the people that work at the rehab and to the people that give to the rehab because, you know, as, as Brian Potter mentioned, it, they never had to worry about money because even if insurance denied it, even if it, they ran out of money or funding, you guys never let the ball drop. Kind of tell people when, when they donate, it goes to a, a lot of things, but the donor sponsorship program is a big deal. Absolutely. Um, as the director, um, the hiring process, to me, donor sponsorship is something I love to tell a prospective therapist about. I say, you know, we are never, I am never, as your boss, ever going to say, you have to discharge this patient because they're out of visits or their insurance won't cover it anymore. I mean, that is, I mean, it's just a recruitment tool that I love to pull out to get, um, to get the therapist to come and want to work for us. So it is absolutely, you don't become a therapist because you want to count money. You, you've become a therapist because you want to help people, so. And I can only imagine the relief that families have when they hear, hey, don't worry about it, we've got your back. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I know that we all need a break from talking about COVID, but it's impossible to deny the ramifications it's had on everything. And, you know, it's been quite costly for the rehab. Tell people tonight, um, kind of to wrap things up, how badly we need your support right now more than ever. We still have patients. We still need to take care of people. Um, and yeah, we spend a little more time cleaning things and we wear masks and we buy, you know, masks for the patients as well sometimes if they don't have them. So, um, you know, we still have the patients coming in and we just have a little bit more cost on our side. So. Yeah. Well, all the money that you give tonight is going to make sure the rehab stays this amazing place and all the extra stuff they have to do now to keep everybody safe, their employees and the patients. So please tonight, pick up that phone and, and try to help us all out because it's your rehab. It's, it's everybody that can see this, it is your rehab. And right now we've got a lot more show ahead of us and let's kick it over to Charlie Chase with a special guest of his own, Charlie. All right, thank you, Braid, and thank you, Gina, for the wonderful story, very inspiring. You know, the Rehab Center is able to help people like Julian because of generous support from our many donors and friends tonight and throughout the year. And one of those generous friends, my next guest, his business, Ekdal Nelson Farm and Ranch, commercial and residential real estate, is one of our corporate partners. We welcome John Ekdal and his son, Everett. John, good to see you. Tell us about your involvement with the Rehab Center. Good to see you, Charlie. Um, we feel really blessed to be able to be a part of, uh, <clears throat> part of this great organization um, as a corporate sponsor. Um, I've known people throughout my life who have been touched by this organization and you know, as, as I become more close with uh, rehab and kind of see the inner workings, um, 
you throw a pandemic at them, Charlie, and they still just mm -hmm. crush right through it. So um, it's really a it's a blessing to us to be able to to be involved. And I thank you for influencing Everett here at a very early age as to how important the rehab is because it continues to grow year after year. And it's also an organization that you may not need it now, but it's there when you do in the event that you need it. We certainly Absolutely. appreciate your, your support there, John. Yes, sir. Nice to see you. And thanks for thank the, you. the social distancing here, right? Exactly. <laughs> and now, how about this word from Ekdal Nelson Real Estate? Ekdal Nelson makes real estate happen. We provide world-class service by living out our company's core values. Honesty. Commitment. Relationships. Knowledge. Creativity. Loyalty. We thrive on providing the extra service that others will not. We work harder to understand your desires than to get the deal closed. Come experience the Ekdal Edge. And thanks again, John and everybody at Ekdal Nelson Real Estate for believing in the West Texas Rehab Center. More entertainment. Looking forward to seeing these ladies. This next group has been here once before. Excited to welcome them back with their newest member, Natalie. Here from Nashville with their unique three-part female harmony and all-American trio who have all run away to chase their all-American dream. <laughs> here are Naomi, Jennifer, and Natalie. They are Runaway June.
Thank you so much, Abilene, and thank you, West mm -hmm. Texas. Jennifer and Natalie and I are so happy to be back here in the Lone Star State. And we are certainly so pleased again to do our part to help the West Texas Rehab Center. Uh, we know the mission is so very important for the people of West Texas, and your gifts enable the center to serve hundreds of children and adults every day. Please call the toll-free number telephone, toll-free telephone number <laughs> on your screen right now to make your gift. Got good at the drunk dial game. Never thought I thought the man said he should. Help me up and say, head my way. Yeah, and I always would. Wake up in your arms from the night before. I pick my stilettos up off the floor. I walk a shame out your front door, but not no more. Cause these ain't my late nights. Lace up, black leather shoes. These ain't my downtown. Dance around. At West Texas Rehab, our donors have blessed us with the ability to provide patients treatment using the latest and most advanced equipment and technology. And on top of that, providing our clinicians advanced training to utilize this technology through continued education. Here to tell you more about one of those pieces of equipment, the BirdTech Balance System, is Doctor of Physical Therapy, Christopher Lambaron. Balance slash vertigo is a very, very common problem in today's society, in particular uh, with people over the age of 50 years old. And uh, as statistics have shown, it's actually increased, um, especially in the number of doctor's visits where patients report or complain or express concern of dizziness, vertigo, maybe even a history of falls with, with the, the physician. It is made by the company named Burtek, and it is called a CDP IVR. So it's a computer posturography machine that involves virtual reality. In obtaining the Burtek balance system, we 
really focused on anyone who is having any type of balance problems, so dizziness, vertigo, um, but it can reach way beyond that. As a physical therapist who has um, a significant passion for dealing with this type of deficit, balance, vertigo, dizziness, to have the opportunity to be here at West Texas Rehab and to have the availability of this type of unit to treat that type of patient, um, it, it makes me not only very excited about the potential outcomes that we could have with our patients in the future, but it also makes me appreciate even more the fact that the West Texas Rehab uh, the donors behind the rehab center, uh, how they're willing to invest not only the time and the financial resources to provide this type of treatment for our patients, but also to allow me to really improve upon my treatment ability with my patients because it is something that I truly, truly am passionate about. Five and a half, five fifty, six hundred, six hundred and fifty. Now plays in. Now seven. Play out. Seven hundred. I retired from teaching ag in 2001 with about 30 years' experience of teaching ag. But the last 13, 14 years was at Wiley. I had just moved to the Abilene area as an ag teacher, and uh, we had a a student. Of course, we was in shows big time and we had a student that showed lambs and his dad worked for the rehab and uh, so he had the idea of having a, a lamb cell the uh, the his son showed lambs and so we uh, we discussed the idea quite a bit my teach uh, there was two of us teaching at Wiley my co-teacher was Randy Gillum and so we were involved in the uh, informal initial stages of it and Shelly Smith came to me and wanted me to go to San Angelo with him to meet with the staff, the rehab staff there in San Angelo as well as some of the lamb producers. There's so many young people that got their start showing at the jackpot show, the rehab jackpot show. And their parents could go in and buy a lamb for the kids that were not old enough to show in the county shows or the major, the major shows, they could come to the rehab show at any age. So, you know, those that were four and five years old would come and uh, learn to show at the rehab show. I think everyone involved, especially the high school students that helped with this, had a, a feeling of pride that they were assisting people in need through the rehab. I, I've been up there on many occasions and, and witnessed the work that goes on and the care of the, the physical therapist and, and those people that build prosthetics and, and that kind of stuff. And, and the people that work at the rehab, they were always at the sales and the shows in the background, you know, primarily. But they were rooting everyone on and, and everyone knew that the rehab appreciated what was being done. All right. Hey, welcome back to Rehab 2021, our 51st annual telethon benefiting the West Texas Rehab Center. Now, we simply could not conduct this telethon every year without the unselfish support of our corporate partners. And we're pleased that Black Plumbing and Maverick Saw Cutting and Core Drilling return as corporate partners. And representing this good friend of the Rehab Center tonight is Chris Black. Chris, we're getting used to this social distancing thing here. <laughs> and I know you had your mask on before you came out. I had mine on as well. We are practicing social distancing, trying to do our best. And it's all to support the Rehab Center. We couldn't let this telethon go away, you know? Tell us about your support. Oh, just being born and raised in this community. I mean, seeing what the rehab does for everybody, it's this community takes care of us and we like to do our part and take, take care of it. Are there any particular reasons that you got involved in supporting the center? Oh, just, just what they do for the community. I mean, I've got lots of friends and family that work up there. I mean, they're just, just everything, getting more involved with what they do. It's just, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Well, corporate sponsors are very important in the telethon and the presentation. We certainly thank you for your participation. Thanks to the entire team over there, okay? Yes, sir. All right, buddy, thank you very much. Now, here's a special message from Black Plumbing. 
Mike Plumbing has been blessed to serve your community and wants to thank you for your support. Because of you choosing Black Plumbing, you made it possible for Black Plumbing to grow and give back to you and your community. Black Plumbing enjoys providing the best plumbing service possible while also being engaged as a community partner with volunteerism and financial support where we can all thrive together. We ask you to check out their services and their commitment to the community at blackplumbing.com, building a stronger community. And thanks again, Black Plumbing and Maverick Saw Cutting and Core Drilling for joining us tonight and their continued to help sustain the rehab center. Well, this next young lady uh, joined the Telethon family back in 2018, quickly became a favorite of all of us, including the kids she visits the, at the rehab center every year. Now, you first saw her on the stage of the X Factor at the age of 13. What confidence she had, my goodness. And she's now moved from Jacksonville, Florida to Nashville to attend college and continue her promising career. Ladies and gentlemen, with the 2021 Rehab House Band, here is Ryan Page.
back with my friends at the West Texas Rehab Center. My visits to Abilene each January for the telethon and to the rehab center to see these kids are so inspiring to me. Truly, their determination, their belief, and their faith are examples to me and to all of us. They are warriors, they do not give up, and they will survive. And your help is so important to them as they conquer the obstacles that they face in their young lives. So please call in your gifts tonight and benefit these adorable children. I personally want to dedicate my next song to the brave first responders and essential workers, the men and women here in West Texas and back home in Nashville, and across the nations who are bravely serving on the front lines. battles cause we know we're gonna win the war, win the war, we're not rattled cause we shattered all of this before, this before, steadier than steel cause we're ready with a shield and sword, a shield and sword, back on the saddle cause we gathered all our strength for more, strength for more, and we won't bow, we won't break, no, we're not afraid to do whatever it takes. We'll never bow, we'll never break. Cause we're warriors, we'll fight for our lives like soldiers. All through the night and we'll give up. We'll survive, we're warriors. And we're stronger, that's why we're alive. And we'll conquer, time after time we'll never fall. My name is Marco Jimenez. I'm a physical therapist. I'm certified in dry needling and I'm also a fellow of the American Academy of the Orthopedic Manual Physical Therapists. As soon as I finished up with PT school, I applied for the Manual Therapy Institute and, and went through the fellowship program. Some of the strengths from that program, it really dives into the subtle things that, being, that can be going on with a patient that can cause them to start having pain or other issues. 
And it's a lot of those things that may be overlooked um, just because there's only so much that we can cover in PT school and they're able through the fellowship program to go a lot more in depth. One of the great things about the fellowship program that I went through is that they've compiled the most effective parts of different treatment styles and combined them into one integrated approach. We know that not every patient is going to respond well to one particular type of treatment, so the more tools and techniques I have available, the better I can tailor my treatments to each patient's needs. Through the fellowship's continuing education courses, I'm also able to continually update and refine my practice as new research comes out. Treatment methods are constantly evolving in our field, and with the continued education, we can ensure that our patients are receiving the best possible care. Several months ago, a group of individuals, therapists in our community, have decided to um, develop a residency program in physical therapy, orthopedic residency in the Abilene area. This residency program is a collaboration of three entities coming together to provide extra training for the new upcoming physical therapists in our field. Uh, the, the, the program will consist of West Texas Rehab Center, Hendrick Medical Center, and Hardin-Simmons University. We're excited about this program coming up. Uh, we'll be accepting our new applicants hopefully around July to November. The, the residency program here in Abilene is, is unique to this area. There is not a residency program west of the, the Metroplex area. Marco you know, has, a, has a, um, a degree beyond his physical therapy degree or beyond his doctorate of physical therapy degree. Marco, being a fellowship, fellowship trained, this is another step taking our career field to another level and we're going to be offering that here, here at the center. Having state-of-the-art equipment is quite frankly a gift that so many donors like you provide to the patients receiving life-changing therapy each and every day at West Texas Rehab. As a person myself with differences, I know the impact it has on people who are able to receive highly skilled care by clinicians of the West Texas Rehab without having to drive hundreds of miles away from home. Laser therapy is just another example of the high-tech equipment I'm talking about, and occupational therapist Matt Wymore is going to tell you more about it. Good evening. Welcome to Telethon 2021. My name is Matthew Wymore, and I'm an occupational therapist here at the Rehab Center. Tonight, I'm excited to show you a piece of equipment that we've been utilizing to help people get better by reducing their pain, reducing their swelling, and increasing their healing time. Tonight, I'm very excited to show you how we do that. Laser therapy works under the condition of photomodulation. We use a class four laser, which is much different than the class three lasers that were used much in the past. A class 3 laser was only able to produce 0.5 watts, where a class 4 laser produces 25 watts. So that is 50 times more power than what had been used in the past. Photomodulation is a photochemical process in which photons from a laser source interact with cells and cause a stimulation and a biomechanical change. These changes can lead to decreased pain and increased healing rates and often the patient can tell a difference after just the first treatment. Class four lasers work very well for pain, soft tissue injuries, scars, wound care, and all bumps and bruises. It can also be used from all ages, from a young child to an older adult. The treatments can be short and they make average recoveries excellent. The combined effect of pain relief, reduction of edema, and promotion of tissue healing makes laser therapy a valuable tool in the outpatient rehabilitation setting. Treatments can start soon after an injury and help with reducing the time absent from strenuous activity. In fact, Alabama and Clemson were two of the first universities to use these with their athletes and I think their successes speak for themselves. Most importantly, I'd like to thank our donors. Without our donors, we could not have equipment like this. This piece of equipment is very expensive and we're lucky to have it. Most people would have to travel to Dallas, San Antonio, or Houston to get this sort of treatment, but thanks to our donors, we're able to offer this here in West Texas. So to all of you that support us, thank you. 
Getting children outside and enjoying the great outdoors can certainly be therapeutic. And that is exactly what took place at San Angelo's inaugural Cast for Kids event. It was a day for these children to forget their struggles and limitations and appreciate a day on the lake, boating and catching a special thrill, their first fish. So this is our, our first event here. My first event to be involved with Cast for Kids at all. You know, truth be told, just kind of was an idea that I wanted to reach out to the local community and, and help some of these kiddos. And you know, I've always been an outdoorsman myself, so uh, I think it was just an opportunity to be able to take young men and women you know, out, out fishing and, and teach them you know, the ways of that. I think anytime you get any kiddos out in the outdoors is, is certainly therapeutic, for, for lack of a better way of putting it. You know, whether it be the bereavement kids or, or some of the more disabled kids, you know, I think you saw both of them, you know, take a minute, both with their parents, um, away from their struggles and, and be able to enjoy what they were doing at the moment. Cash for Kids Foundation has been around since 1991. Cash stands for Catch a Special Thrill. We do fishing events for children that are disabled, with special needs, disadvantaged. The cool thing is with the West Texas Rehab, at the events, so many of the people that, that volunteer, so many are rehab uh, employees, you know? And so they know the kids, and the kids come in and tell great stories. You know, at most events that we do, you don't know the kids, you don't know their name, you have to look at their name tag, but here they, they walk up and everybody's cheering and screaming and they know them and, and it's, it's, it's really a special thing. To be able to offer this program to our patients, uh, this opportunity, is something that's amazing. Um, they, a lot of these kids don't have the opportunity. They spend so much of their time working and doing therapy um, and, and life can be challenging and hard sometimes for these kids. So for them to have the opportunity to come out here and do something that's just for fun, to meet new people, to talk about all the exciting fish that they, that they caught, to, to get to meet some of these anglers, to show them around and show them a special time. It's a great opportunity for them. It means the world to me. As we approach the top of the hour, let's pause now for station identification. You're watching Rehab 2021. We are live at the Abilene Convention Center. Welcome back to Rehab 2021. And thanks for joining us tonight as we look to raise at least a million dollars for the West Texas Rehab Center for the 26th straight year. Now, for our friends tonight who give us at least $250, we have a special premium gift. You will receive a beautiful full color 2021 calendar from the Rehab Center to remind you throughout the year, not only of our mission, but your partnership with us. And it's, it's a great calendar. As a matter of fact, right here is January and it has uh, Runaway June, Neil McCoy right there. Yeah, so you get one of those if you call in your donation of $250 or more, okay? Now, here at Rehab 2021 is another talented group whose familiar sound is popular in West Texas tonight. They are without their lead singer. You may have heard of him, Red Stegall. Well, Red is unable to be here tonight as he recovers from his recent bout with the coronavirus and happy to report that he is doing well. Red may not be here tonight, but you know the boss is tuned in to keep an eye on these guys, his great team of musicians, and here they are now. Ladies and gentlemen, the boys in the bunkhouse. been this lonesome it's enough to make a man lay down and die
the guitar with the Steve. Pocket full of quarters, two feet through that old jukebox. Bob Will's music helps to keep that woman off my mind. I tend to keep them long necks coming long as I got money, cause I plan on being here till closing time. Thank you. You know, we're very pleased to be here tonight filling in for Red and playing a few of our old favorite songs. And, you know, cowboys, cattle, horses, and our Western heritage are so important to Red and to us. Cowboys and cattlemen have helped to build our great nation. And the ranching industry also has helped build the West Texas Rehab Center. We tip our hats to the Rehab Center and its mission of helping its neighbors in West Texas. And we encourage you to call in your gifts tonight so the Rehab Center can continue its great work. I just up and say, I'm a native son of San Antonio. When I greet my neighbors with a how you are, I'm wealthy as a king upon a throne. Now you can have your mansions and your cottage small. I'll just take my home in San Antonio.
Nice work, guys. Thank you, Danny and the boys in the bunkhouse. Right now, we extend special thanks to our sponsor for this hour of the telethon, Blue Cross Blue Shield. We certainly appreciate you. Now, we welcome another regular member of our telethon family. This actor, singer, producer, and university professor is perhaps best known as Dr. Tony Jones on the popular television series General Hospital. Now, he was born right here in West Texas in Fisher County. We know him best as a longtime friend of the Rehab Center who first appeared on the telethon back in 1992. He's in the Vexus Fiber phone bank tonight. Brad Mall is here. Brad, it's always great to see you. And I, for your fans out there, I got to bring up something, okay? On General Hospital, not too long ago, I saw you make a return appearance on there. It's been a while <laughs> since you were on the show. Yep. But you made a return appearance as a ghost of yourself. Now, how desperate is that? It's pretty desperate. I scared myself, actually. <laughs> well, I think I actually hold the record for being dead the longest on a soap opera. No, you don't hold the record being dead the longest on the soap opera, but thanks for pointing that out. Hey, one thing I did want to ask you about, you have other projects I know you've been working on in the off season. Uh, while a lot of people are not working, you have been. So what can you share and what can't you share that you'd like to share? Well, uh, well when I went out to do General Hospital this last time. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an Amazon Prime series. It's a spinoff of The Bay, which is on that. Okay. And it's called YA. I don't know what that means yet. It has, the series has it premiered, but I did do a couple of episodes and I'll be on there some, but uh, I play a very different kind of professor on that. Really? Yeah. Different. <laughs> you're a pretty nice guy. You're saying you're not a nice guy? Well, I know that I'm a ghost again. So how hey. about that? <laughs> Every show I come on, I either put it off the air or I become a ghost. So, <laughs> well, well, good luck with all the uh, new series coming up. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Hope to see you on General Hospital again. Great to see you over there in the phone bank tonight. Bring us thank up to date. You. Well, you know, uh, welcome to the Vexus Fiber Phone Bank and our volunteers. Actually, they asked me if uh, I would call them Charlie's Angels tonight. So they are. <laughs> there are volunteers here taking the phone calls with your generous gifts to benefit the West Texas Rehab Center. And the center is so deserving of your support because it provides life-changing therapy and treatment to the people of West Texas. And again this year, the ladies of Beta Sigma Phi have volunteered to work in our phone bank. Wave if you're on camera, girls and ladies, because I really want to thank Connie Harris and the Beta Sigma Phi for their community service. And we appreciate your work tonight. And I'm joined by two special guests from CBS Television Stations, KTAB in Abilene, KLST in San Angelo, two of the 12 television markets showing tonight's telethon. And please say hello to the general manager, Albert Gutierrez, and David Wagner. Hey, guys. Thank how you, you doing? We're doing great. Thank you. Thank you for having us today. You know, we couldn't miss this. You know, this is a great opportunity. You know, thank you so much for, for helping us. Can you tell me a little bit about your role in all this and why you do it? Sure, absolutely, Brad. Um, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, much like what uh, the mission of West Texas, you know, rehab is to provide services to anyone that needs help, you know, uh, without their, you know, without considering it or, you know, any of their financial issues or any of that, you know, taking everybody, we, we sort of do the, the kind of the, the same thing. Our mission's kind of parallel, you know, as a group of TV stations, you know, we, um, we, we help those communities that we operate in. And so this was truly a, um, you know, a, a no brainer simply because, you know, we, we just, our mission is just so, so much alike what the West Texas rehab uh, mission, you know, is. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's been, you know, a long relationship of many years. And, uh, and so, and we, we gladly do it. We look forward to this uh, every, every single year, you know. That, that's for sure. You know, that's the thing is that it, it's so much the way West Texas people are. You know, uh, I was helped by it. My family was helped by the rehab center, and you guys helped the rehab center. It's just a West Texas thing. Uh, David, I know that you've been, thank you, Albert. Uh, I know that you've worked in television, 
You've worked for the rehab center. How many years did you work for the rehab center? So I did three years for the rehab center. I, I was in donor relations, so helping out with the auction items, uh, gathering those and, and setting them all out uh, the couple of days prior to the telethon. But I, I did that from 08 to uh, 2011. Well, so you know both sides of it. I really do. Uh, you know, I anchored uh, the TV news. I did the evening anchor job at KLST for uh, 11 years. And so I was on that side and interviewing, uh, you know, guests and uh, patients, uh, all therapists from the rehab center there in the studio. Yeah. And now I'm in management uh, as the uh, news director back oh, at the okay. stations for the last 10 years. And so now I really try to get my anchors and everybody to do those stories. And however, I got roped into this this tonight <laughs> again. And, and I mean, it's, it's a good thing because obviously uh, the mission of the rehab center, I know both sides being there and in front of the camera and then behind the scenes with donor relations here and it's just a wonderful mission and they help so many people and you see it every day i mean the, the story you saw earlier julian potter um he obviously is a, a kid at central high school that that uh, we watch play football yeah uh, you know every friday night with our staff and our sports guys and so it, it just means so much to be able to provide that money uh, to the center and and help with the gathering of the money to, to provide those kind of services for those kids Boy, and it's great because you bring that unique insight of having worked one-on-one -on -one with those people on the inside and also with the great people that donate to this cause and also know what, about the television part of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's, it's such an easy ask. I mean, even when I was in donor relations to ask for auction items for stuff or, or even money just for the center, it was an easy ask because people know the West Texas Rehab Center in Abilene and San Angelo and in Ozona as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I worked that territory when I was in donor relations. I would go down to Sonora or to Ozona uh, and, and ask, you know, for, for whatever we needed from the rehab center. And people are always, when you say West Texas Rehabilitation Center, yeah. they say, sure, that's, that's pretty much their answer. Yeah. So. When people understand the services that they get here, uh, they are, their hearts just open up. Well, anyway, I thank you, both of you, for what you do. It's great to see you here tonight, and I appreciate it so much. Don't forget to place your bids for your favorite items at tonight's rehab auction, which is sponsored by Ectol Nelson Real Estate. Now, here's a message from one of our sponsors. Thank you. Though human ingenuity will continue to make various inventions, with the help of new machines built to do the same, of this I am certain, no invention will ever be devised that is more beautiful, more simple, and more purposeful than those that nature designs. Proud server of the most advanced machine on earth. So, you may ask, what is the West Texas Rehab Foundation and why do we have it? Those are good questions and I'm glad I asked them. Chuck? Okay then, thank you so much, Chad. Truth be told, without the West Texas Rehab Foundation, the rehab would not be able to do all we do for even a fourth of the more than 650 patients we see every day. We couldn't. More than one dollar out of every five spent on patient care comes from the foundation which allows us to fulfill the second half of our mission of treating every patient, quote, regardless of financial circumstance. That's right, and because the foundation is so crucial in the strength and extent of what we do, we in the foundation work as a team to help Friends of West Texas Rehab, Hospice of the Big Country in Abilene, and Hospice of San Angelo find practical solutions to everyday desires and needs, often through planned giving. Whether the desire is to leave a legacy through a major gift, avoid or reduce taxes, increase income, realize tax-free appreciation, provide for an income you can't outlive, protect assets, provide for retirement, provide for expert management, or diversify assets. Our job is to be helpful without expectation, obligation, or cost. Our work is especially advantageous to anyone doing estate planning, wishing to benefit a charity or charities, facing significant capital gains, gift or estate taxes, or anyone with a life or estate planning need coupled with a desire to benefit at charities they love. The Rehabs Foundation team of Roger Kennedy, Jason Weaver, and the two of us, Chuck Rogers and Chad Hurt, consider our job as way more than seeing how much money we can raise through the many estate planning tools out there. You better believe that, Chad. It's about this simple fact that we have the opportunity to help our friends first, and then, hopefully along the way, we can discover together whether or not their philanthropic desires match West Texas Rehab's amazing mission 
of improving the quality of life of those we serve, regardless of financial circumstance. We look forward to hearing from you. Mike Plumbing has been blessed to serve your community and wants to thank you for your support. Because of you choosing Black Plumbing, you made it possible for Black Plumbing to grow and give back to you and your community. Black Plumbing enjoys providing the best plumbing service possible while also being engaged as a community partner with volunteerism and financial support where we can all thrive together. We ask you to check out their services and their commitment to the community at blackplumbing.com. Building a stronger community. Welcome back, everybody, to Rehab 2021. Who is that masked man there with Charlie? Well, it's the president and CEO of the West Texas Rehab Center, Steve Martin, here to tell us about another important feature of the telethon. Good to see you, Steve. Now, he, he, he wanted to come out in the mask, and I had mine on just before, you know, we uh, came out of the break. That's the important thing that's going on backstage here tonight. Yeah, and, you know, we do that every day at the Rehab Center, and so it's mm -hmm. important for, you know, we got a lot of folks volunteering back here to help us, and so it's important for our community, and it's important for, especially us in healthcare, to make sure we socially distance, make sure we use hand sanitizer, and certainly use masks when we can. You know, I, and let me point out something. I had a chance yesterday to visit the Rehab Center here in Abilene to see some of the new features, some of the new equipment and programs that are being designed for people in need of them. And I was so impressed, Steve, and I got to tell you, they were telling me that all, all these things that were happening, all the good programs, all the equipment, were thanks to special donors who just step forward and say, look, this helped me, I want to support this, make it available to anyone who needs it. Absolutely, and every year we put a, a capital expenditures list together, which is a lot of equipment, mm -hmm. and we've been amazed at how many people come on and they said, I want to help you do this for patients. And, uh, you know, and it's, you know, Yes, we take care of everybody regardless of their financial circumstance, but we're really the best place to come for everybody with insurance and other resources because our donors make equipment and facilities available to everyone. That's right. That are not available anywhere else. It's, yeah. a, it's a wonderful organization, and this is our 51st telethon. The program started back in 1953 as far as the mm -hmm. Rehab Center is concerned. So progress is made every year thanks to you. And Steve, your leadership is uh, just terrific. So thank you for being well, that's here. That's our board's tonight. leadership. They're incredible. And Good. thank you. 21 years. Yes, 21 years. Here. Amazing. Thank you. Don't Appreciate look a day that. over, you know. I know. Don't say it. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is, the telethon is always our chance to, to tell our story of the rehab center and to show the people who support us the impact they have on our patients and their families. The support of our donors enables our exceptional clinicians and nurses to help our patients accomplish amazing things. Since the doors opened at the rehab center in 1953, everything has been done without regard to a patient's financial circumstance. The incredible leadership of our board, board of directors helps make this possible. They volunteer their time throughout the year to help provide guidance and direction. And each year before the telethon, they come together to call their fellow board members, businesses, and friends to raise money for the telethon. This year, because of the pandemic, our annual board and friends campaign has been more important than ever. I asked four of our board members to tell you more about their success on this campaign. Here are Jeff Up and Stephen Azell of Abilene and Rick Mantooth and James Skinner of San Angelo. I'm Jeff Upp, Chairman of the West Texas Rehabilitation Center Board of Directors. And I'm Stephen Ezell, Chairman of the Big Country Board and Friends Campaign. It's our pleasure to serve on the West Texas Rehab Center Board of Directors, and it's been an honor to ask fellow board members in our community to lend a hand and support Rehab 2021 and our patients. During our Board and Friends Campaign, it was our goal to raise funds to help patients serve by the rehab. So every dollar you give tonight will go directly into patient treatment for over 650 men, women, and children served by the West Texas Rehab each day. We come together in Abilene, San Angelo, and Ozona to assist all of our patients. This year we had a successful campaign in Abilene in the big country. And here to tell you about the efforts in San Angelo and the Concho Valley are Rick Mantooth and James Skinner. Hello, I'm Rick Mantooth, Vice Chair of the West Texas Rehab Board of Directors. And my name is James Skinner, Board Member and Chairman of the Concho Valley Board and Friends Campaign for West Texas Rehab. You know, over the course of several weeks, we've written letters and made phone calls to friends, donors, and local businesses. Our neighbors and fellow board members responded generously with several pledges, making our efforts very successful. 2020 was a trying year, and we applaud everyone who continues to support our efforts, despite the challenges and the difficulties. We've served our patients continuously as they faced loss of income, loss of insurance, and many other challenges due to the coronavirus pandemic. 
Our goal is to raise dollars necessary to provide care to all who need us regardless of their financial circumstances. The campaign here in the Concho Valley in the Big Country made a tremendous impact on all the patients we serve at each of our facilities in San Angelo, Abilene, and Ozona. From the entire board of directors, our staff, and our patients, we say thank you so much for your kindness, generosity, and support. You know, the role our board members play is so vital to our success. We sincerely thank them and everyone who participated in our Board and Friends campaign this year. Their efforts mean that every dollar you pledge tonight with your telephone calls and your winning auction bids go directly to patient care. You know, this year during the pandemic, our board members committed to taking care of our employees so they can take care of our patients. We were able to retain every one of our dedicated employees so we could continue the mission of the West Texas Rehab Center. And this year, we are especially thankful to be able to help those families who did lose jobs or had their benefits cut because of COVID-19. We are grateful to our board members and our many friends for making that possible. You know, you're saying a lot of things that a lot of people are surprised to hear, but are certainly happy to hear. Absolutely. Okay, you hear the noise? Here we go, the fanfare, our first tour of the night. Let's check it out, my friends. We are at $353,276. We certainly appreciate your contribution, and certainly we want you to participate now if you haven't already, okay? And now to tell us about another rehab success story made possible by your generosity. Braid Blanks. Tell us about this little superhero here, Braid. Oh, I would be happy to. Thank you so much, Charlie. I'm going to take a minute here just to say something. I am a proud member, board member of the West Texas Rehab, have been for years. And um, I just thank everybody out there. If we gave you a call and you uh, donated, I personally want to say thank you. It means so much. And that number that we just saw, all that money is going toward keeping the rehab the way that it is and making it even better for you in the future. And I don't know if you caught it or not, but Steve mentioned they did not have to lay off one person, not one employee lost their job because of COVID. I think that deserves a round of applause. I hear some clapping. I agree, totally agree. And on that note, this year more than ever, we really need some hope. And if you ever wanted to see a picture of hope, you are in luck. We're gonna introduce you to a patient of the West Texas Rehab from San Angelo, and he might be small, but he has given us a big shot of inspiration. We hope this story shows you just how important and life-changing your donations are. He's just, he's the greatest, I think. He's. He's my, my little superhero. I think he's so strong. Liam is uh, just a big ball of sunshine. Getting him to laugh is the best ever. <laughs> when he laughs, like the whole room lights up. <laughs> it seems this little guy leaves a big impression on everyone he meets, and for good reason. He's been through quite a lot in his little life. I guess they gave us the bad news first, or what could be, so it was kind of overwhelming at first. He was diagnosed with septo-optic dysplasia um, at birth, so um, that means that his, um, his optic nerve um, is smaller than normal, um, so he has a lot of visual deficits, and that's one of the biggest deficits right now um, that we're working to overcome. And it also means that um, where the, the connection, where his brain connects to one half to the other, there's some abnormalities there also. So that impairs his motor development, his um, speech and language development, and his fine motor development too. Liam's mother, Taylor Ledesma, wasted no time finding help for her son. And the team at West Texas Rehab wasted no time getting Liam the treatments he needed. Right away, he and pediatric therapist Lindsay McMillan formed a special bond. It's scary for, uh, you know, for an infant to come in and, and hear a new voice and not know anything about that person. And so I had him sitting in my lap and we just kind of talked. I was talking with mom, getting to know her a little bit. He turned to me and he looked me in the face and he put his little hand up on my face. And I tell you, I was, I was a goner at that point. I, um, I fell in love with Liam um, immediately. And I feel like we've had a pretty special bond ever since then. Liam receives treatment from the physical, occupational, and speech therapist at West Texas Rehab. He also gets help from the orthotics department, and it's all right here at one campus. Being a single mom, Taylor says it's a godsend. I'm so grateful to them. If I could, I could tell them that a million times a day. I don't, I don't know. I am so grateful to each and every one of them that has helped because I, I know that they had a big part to play. And so I know when he starts walking or when he starts talking and 
whenever he's older, I know that we'll be, it'll always come back to Wessex as we have. They are, they are the root of everything. My big goal for Liam is to be as independent as possible. Be able to grow up and, and do amazing things because I know Liam has amazing things in store for him. And you can be a part of that amazing future. Because of your generous support, the West Texas Rehab is able to give kids like Liam the very best treatments with the latest technology. I, I grew up um, here in San Angelo, grew up volunteering here at West Texas Rehab um, through my teen years. Moved away for a couple of years, lived in the Austin area, and um, after I graduated PT school, and I thought, surely I can find something like West Texas Rehab. It's Austin, it's a big city, and I'm telling you, there's not anything else like that out there. Well, I feel like it's just a privilege to be able to be a part of it because he does do the work. He's the one that has to, you know, make the most of it. And for me, being a therapist, isn't a job. It's kind of like that saying, find what you love and do what you love and it will never be work. And, and that makes it not a job. That makes it just a joy. It's Doug Liam. Okay, go. Go, go, go. go. I think I, I just really hope that he can have a normal life. As a mother, I want him to have every opportunity given to him and not ever have to be you look down upon or think about, well, maybe maybe we can't do that. I just want him to have everything that he wants. If he wants to drive, if he wants to, you know, go do something on his own without anyone to help him. I want him to be able to do anything he wants and just have every opportunity that everyone else would be able to have. My hope for him is to be able to access the world in, in the same way that anyone else would. And that includes being able to communicate, to being able to act, you know, to move through different places and, and being able to, to have the job that he wants. Liam's mom, Taylor, has a special message for those who have given to the West Texas Rehab and given her little superhero hope when he needed it most. I, mean, I cannot thank them enough. It has helped so, I can't imagine the difference that if my son hadn't been able to attend West Texas Rehab because it has, it's just been the biggest blessing probably more than I can ever tell, but I don't know what we would have done without West Texas Rehab, without the people here, without the, the support from them, without their caring, and they just, they're great people, and I appreciate anyone who supports West Texas Rehab. Man, I love that story, and I'm so happy because tonight we have got Taylor and her son Liam right here with us in the studio. We're so happy to have y'all driving in from San Angelo. Thank yes, you for being here. Thank you for having us. Of course, Liam is super happy tonight. I mean, I think I think he shares in our joy for the, the telethon every year. Yes, ma'am, always. Now, and another thing I have to tell y'all, she just had a baby, guys. I mean, I'm talking December 28th. Yes, ma'am. Just had a baby boy. So. Thank you for being here and congratulations. Yes, of course, anything for West Texas Rehab. I see, I love hearing that and it's so apparent that you guys have a heart for the rehab and that you're really a team. Uh, and, and we touched on it in the story, you know, you were working with several different departments yes. right in one place. How beneficial was that just with all that you have to deal with and you're, you know, at the, with your parents helping and being a, or as a single mother, it really probably helped to have it all right there. Yes, ma'am, it, it was truly, truly, I, I, I'm so incredibly grateful. They, they started out as therapists and they turned into family. They've done so much for my son and I, I truly can't, I can't imagine how it would have been if he didn't have that. It, it's actually, it changed so much and he, he made leaps and bounds worth of changes in a short amount of time just because they were so great to him. Now, how many times are you going a week now? We go two times a week and we do speech and OT. And, you know, I know that they are so involved and they're a team. They all work together to make sure they give Liam the very best treatment and the very best, you know, situations for you. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, what kind of equipment and things that you've used at the rehab and how, uh, you know, all these don donations from nights like this go to all that equipment. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's truly, it's just incredible. It's amazing. And it, it helps with him so much. And I know he's just as grateful as I am. And, you know, it's really cool because your dad, I've heard, has built replicas of a lot of what the rehab has in his backyard. Yes, ma'am. We Anything that has helped him, we, we try to do our very best to get just so we can continue furthering what they've taught him at home so that way he, he can get every everything that they've offered. That's right. And, you know, 
in, in that same vein, the donations tonight, they stay right here to help the people that walk through the doors every single day at the rehab. And I know that I can't imagine the, the kind of medical bills that you've accru accrued over the years. And the donor sponsorship program benefits so many people across the board. Talk a little bit about how much help that's been for y'all. Yes, ma'am, it's, it's, it's been an incredible help. Because honestly, I think without it, I don't know how we would have done it. So I, I am truly, I'm truly blessed with anyone who has helped it's it's done so much for us it, and it's it's, incred it's incredible that's right um, well we know that Liam is very vocal tonight I think he's trying to tell everybody at home that this is the time to pick up the phone and give us a call here at the uh, West Texas Rehab Telethon and we're so so happy that you were able to come tonight is there anything you'd like to say to the people at home to help them understand how important and how vital their gifts are it's it's just a, a, thank you so much to anyone who can give any anything at all. It, it makes the world of a difference, especially for for all of the children, for anyone who attends. Just thank you because I can't imagine I can't imagine how we would have done it without it. So thank you for your support, a hundred percent. One last thing: what is your what is the next step for Liam? What's your big big hurdle that you're working toward right now? He, he's actually going to be attending school next year, and I just I just want him to have a completely a completely normal experience that any child would have. I don't want him to have any obstacles. I think you're in the right place. You're in good hands at the West Texas Rehab. Yes, ma'am. Taylor, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's great to see you. Thank you, you as well. All right, well, I hope you enjoy this next thing as much as I do, because we're going to get some great music from Mr. Neil McCoy. Neil, take it away. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Clap your hands. When I start until everybody in here claps your hands, you clap your hands at home. Some men are attracted into a pair of big blue eyes. It takes a pretty face, well, just to make their temperature rise. I got you. But looks aren't that important. That's right. Just icing on the cake. Now, what really turns me on ooh, is the shake. Come on, kids. Shake it to the left. Shake it to the right. Shake it real low, shake it till you can't shake it no more. It's a natural attraction, a danger wouldn't make a mistake. Now what really turns me on, ooh, is the shake. When he first said Adam, which outfit do you like? Y'all talk to him? All right, hey, this song's got a whole bunch of cities in it. It's New York, LA. The real words are Houston, but since we're in Abilene, or no, not you people, y'all are where y'all are watching, but to these people, these live people, I mean, y'all are live. Never mind. Anyway, we're in Abilene, so when it gets to the Houston part, say Abilene. I'll help you. Gary, Indiana, Mobile, Alabama, Phoenix, Arizona, Bismarck, North Dakota, New York, LA. Shake it real funky, shake it real low, shake it till you can't 
doing welcome everybody i am glad to be back i'm gonna be here three more times after this so if you're saying we ain't done the one song i like well i may not but we're gonna do something that you'll like we hope hey we thank y'all for being here i uh i'm gonna take a second to talk about what i my patriotism i uh i've been on about 16 uso tours in the last 19 years entertaining our troops all over the world I'm awfully proud of that. Got a young Marine right there, 21 years. Met him a while ago. Thank you for your service. I've been to Iraq a few times, Afghanistan a few times, Pakistan, Bosnia, Italy, Hungary, Germany. We love our country. We love what our country stands for. We love our flag. We'll talk to you a little bit more about that here in just a second. But I'm going to sing a song of one of my heroes that we lost this year. I lost two of them. I lost Joe Diffie, a dear friend of mine, a longtime friend of mine, and lost Charlie Pride, a guy that's almost been my dad for the last 40 years, took me into in the music business in 1981 and helped me get to where I am today. But I'm going to sing a song that Joe Diffie just sang the fire out of. I'm going to try to sing it. Now, some of you are going to say, well, hey, you ain't no Joe Diffie. That's right. But I'm going to do my best at it. But I just I always tell, when we work with Joe quite a few times, I always tell him, I said, man, will you just make sure I don't care what you sing tonight. You can see John, sing John Deere Green a hundred times. As long as you put in ships that don't come in, he said, I'll make sure that we get it in. So we're going to sing ships that don't come in. And I have not committed it to memory. So that young lady around there was so kind to write the words out and put them right there. So if any time you're thinking, looks like Neil's reading words, I am. They're right there. If y'all come down here and stand right here, y'all can read them with me. But this ships don't come in. My band does a great job on this. This is one of the great country songs ever. I could tell he had a tough life. The way he sat and stared And me, I'd come to push and shove So I pulled up a chair We talked of roads and travel We talked of love untrue The things that come unraveled Who came to get your fools And just when I Said at least we had our chances. There's those who never have. So here's to all the soldiers who have ever died in vain. The insane locked up in themselves. The homeless down on Maine. To those who stand on empty shores and speak. Said it's only life's illusions bring us to this bar to pick up these old crutches 
and compare each other's scars. Cause the things we're calling heartache, yeah, they're hardly worth our time. We'd bitch about a dollar. There were those without a dime. As he ordered one last round, he said, I guess we can't complain. Cause God made life a gamble. And we're still in the game. So here's to all the soldiers who have ever died in vain. The insane life. that don't come in. Hey. Great work, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to have that for this band right here, y'all. What's okay. going on, Charlie Chase? Okay, come here. All right, now, no, social distance. Oh, that's right, I'm we, sorry. That's right, we gotta be socially distanced here, well, you okay? you had your mask on, so. Well, I know, yeah. I, I, I was actually gonna hand you my mic. I forgot you're, you're rich and you have one of Don't those. Don't hand me that. Mics. No, I've got this thing right here, okay. <laughs> no, um, you did a great job with that song. Thank Didn't you. he do great? I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to milk you for applause, but it deserved it. You did a great job. Thank you, Charlie. Um, it's so good to have you back with us here at Rehab 2021. and. You certainly know how to entertain, obviously. <laughs> Indeed, you are a legend in the music industry with your number one hit singles, gold and platinum albums, Entertainer of the Year awards. Oh, did, keep it going. Did I get all that right? Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more. Keep that's, reading. No, oh, they didn't put it up there. I think that's all, you, that's all you gave me to say. <laughs> uh, but one thing I do know, your unmistakable love for country yes, sir. and patriotism. Can you, it, it's not only part of your show, it's part of your heart. Tell me, how that, tell me how that came about. It is. I appreciate you letting me talk about it. I, I'll give you the cliff notes on it because I'm very long-winded. My mother's from the Philippines. My father was in the United States Army in 1952. Right. He uh, graduated, just graduated from Texas A&M. <laughs> <laughs> got to throw that in. I understand. And he had got his draft orders to go to Korea, just like every, all the other young men were doing right then. Right. And right at the last second, because of his engineering and surveying degree, they sent him to the Philippines. He started surveying over there in some of the jungles, Mindanao, and, and locating stuff on maps for us and for them. He met my mom, married her, had my brother born in the Philippines, moved back to the United States of America, and had my sister and then me, the baby. And she always, mom always taught us because she, she grew up in a very tough situation. She always told us to respect our flag and our country. So about, can I go on? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Go, no, go ahead. So about five years ago, as mom was just starting on the edge of onset dementia. She had taught us kids to, to appreciate what we have, the freedoms and the rights that we have in this United States of America because she, sure. uh, get emotional, sorry, she comes sorry. from another country and she always taught us to, to appreciate that. So as she was just starting to get sick, I just said, I'm just gonna write the Pledge of Allegiance on my Facebook page. So I wrote it just to see what my followers do. Well, they started writing it back. And then they would say, hey, what's the deal on this? It's pretty cool. Now, can and I pick up the story? You can. <laughs> yes, sir, you can. Now, take, a, take a breath. Okay. Because ever since, five years now, he has been saying the Pledge of Allegiance live every morning on Facebook. And it's attracted quite a following. Um, where have you, where, okay, in all the years you've done this, where is the most unusual place you found yourself doing the pledge? Oh, my gosh, I don't even... Well, for a while be before COVID hit, I would have said my house because I just wasn't there very much. Well, but yeah. this, this whole last year, I've been there a lot. You know, we've said it uh, in different countries. Uh, and I I've said it in just about every time we play a show, when we get to someplace early enough, people will ride and say, we had some people come out this morning and they'll say, what time are you saying the pledge? We'd like to come say the pledge with you. So when we go do shows, yeah. the people find out what time. So 
just any time that we get an opportunity to say it, uh, we take that opportunity. Does just it change of, every day, the time? Uh, we ch well, in the last, since COVID, we try to average around 9 a.m. Central Time, but it does change according to the time zones. You know how the traveling okay. is. Uh, but we try to average about 9 a.m. Central, but it's at Neil McCoy Music if you want right. to come say it with us. So you did one this morning here in Abilene, right? Yes, sir, we sure did. Okay. Would yeah. you mind doing it, a bonus version of it tonight with us? <laughs> yeah, then I'll have to do it in the morning. But yeah, no, you no, still I have will. to do it in the morning, you know. I will. Uh, is there an American flag? I can't see in here. Oh, there's one right there. Right, yeah, right there. Right over there. Y'all, if you will, uh, would you say the Pledge of Allegiance with Charlie and I? Yeah, let's and do it. This morning was 1,000. 843 consecutive days. I was, I'll tell you this, the only thing I do different than, than what you may have grown up saying it is one nation under God goes together. If you're looking at it, there's no comma there, uh, only because that's the way I feel it should be. And, and if you say it right, that's fine. If you say it wrong, then I'm going to come out there and beat you over the head with this hat. <laughs> no, you're not. All I'm right, Neil, I'll shut up. I'm you're ready on. You're ready to go, sir. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right. Thank you, buddy. Thanks to all of you. Thanks again to Neil McCoy for that reminder of the freedoms we enjoy in this great nation because of the sacrifices of so many. Neil, we appreciate you, buddy. He'll be back a little bit later on in the show. Now, the Rehab Center treats hundreds of patients every day at its three locations in Ozona, San Angelo and Abilene, and among those patients are veterans who have served our country in the military. And next, we have the story of Michael Burns, one of those military veterans who has benefited from your generous contributions to the rehab center. Watch. So it was late January 2002. Um, I, at the time, I was in the finance business. I was in the mortgage industry. Um, my wife and I had a beautiful little house in a gated community, literally on the golf course, and she was pregnant with our second daughter. And I just had this really weighing heavy on my heart. And uh, I came home one day after work and, and we sat down on the sofa and I said, hey babe, I, I think I'm gonna take a little hiatus from my, my career and go, jo go join the military and just do like two years, do my part. So at the tender age of 32, I went and enlisted in the army, got stationed in Fort Raleigh, Kansas. Almost immediately upon arriving into Fort Raleigh, Kansas, this was just prior to the Iraq war kicking off. Um, we had come down on orders that we were going to Iraq. I left for my first deployment to Iraq. Prior to that, you know, I had some concerns. I mean, you're going into combat, you don't know what to expect. And this was a, a different type of combat environment. My leg got injured uh, during my first deployment. It was uh, October 20th of 2003. Um, the camp that we were in, the forward operating base that we were in, on a regular basis, we got hit with mortar and rocket rounds. I had my first day off, and, and the entire time that we'd been there where I had some downtime, uh, I was doing some laundry in a five gallon bucket and a rocket round came in just close enough and detonated in our living area. I didn't lose my leg right away, thank God. Uh, I was just peppered with some shrapnel. Some of the shrapnel had some depleted uranium in it, so it started causing some other health issues, started actually uh, deteriorating some of the tissue and, and uh, muscles in my leg. Um, and overall, that probably caused more issues than anything. So I went and saw my, uh, my doctor here locally, uh, told him that I would agree to the amputation, and it wasn't even a week later um, when I went in and had it done. I had seen Rob uh, Walker here at Texas Rehab. He had done some braces for me, um, and I knew going into it, you know, I kind of had to have stuff in place as far as where I wanted to go, who I wanted to see, and what I wanted done. So I knew exactly the prosthetic leg I needed. I knew that I wanted Rob at West Texas Rehab here to see me. I always refer all the veterans I know over to West Texas Rehab. Uh, and again, it's, it's because it's, it's not a standardized treatment. It's a, it's a specialized treatment. They take each individual and look at their specific needs and fit the, the whether it's a prosthetic, physical therapy or whatever, they, they design uh, whatever you're going through to fit your needs. Eknall Nelson makes real estate happen. We provide world-class service by living out our company's core values. Honesty. Commitment. Relationships. Knowledge. Creativity. Loyalty. We thrive on providing the extra service that others will not. We work harder to understand your desires. And to get the deal closed. 
Come experience the Ekdal Edge. As many of you recall, Harry Holt was the authoritative voice of West Texas agriculture for almost 70 years, first on the radio and then television. Every morning he told us where it had rained, why livestock prices were up or down, and everything else that was important to folks in the ag industry. He also made sure his audience heard all about the West Texas Rehabilitation Center, especially the Roundup for Rehab, a program he worked hard year after year to help make a huge success. It is in his memory that the Harry Holt Good Neighbor Award was created in 2004 to annually recognize an individual who measures up to the example set by this rehab icon. The recipient must be a person in agricultural or agricultural media who has promoted rehab and its mission. A person who has used personal or professional contacts to convince others to support rehab and has encouraged the next generation to get involved with WTRC. A person who has led by example, giving first, then encouraging others to give. And finally, a person Harry Holt would agree deserves special recognition. Tonight, we honor just such a person, and here to tell you more about our recipient is our honorary Roundup for Rehab Chair, Red Stegall. I once saw a list of what were called the rules for a perfect day. One of them stuck with me. It was do someone a good turn and don't get caught. Well, this year's Harry Holt Award winner must have taken that rule to heart because that is exactly the way he is and exactly the way he has always been. Born in Beaumont, Texas, this seventh of nine children grew up knowing the value of hard work, integrity, and loyalty. He also learned to love working with horses, roping, and riding. After graduating from East Mountain Upshur High School, he went straight to working on construction projects before attending Texas A&M College. On the weekends, though, you'd find him at a rodeo where he entered calf roping competitions. Like a lot of calf ropers, he won some and lost some but was told not to quit his day job. Then one Saturday night in Haskell, Texas, while he was working on the Paint Creek Power Plant during the summer before going back to Texas A&M, that young man happened upon a beautiful young lady named Doris Strain at the Courthouse Square. Two years later in 1957, they married in Haskell and spent their first two years in College Station while he finished his degree in mechanical engineering. After graduation, he went to work for International Paper in Spring Hill, Louisiana. When their firstborn, Randy, came into the world in 1960, well, I guess you could say that it was the beginning of fatherhood and the end of his roping days. It was not, however, the end of new adventures. Why do you ask? Because in 1961, the company bought an airplane to fly to their different projects throughout West Texas. And, of course, it didn't take long before that young man had himself a pilot's license. Understand that being an AE to the core, having a pilot's license, and owning an airplane can make you pretty popular with colleges. And before you knew it, he was approached by the coaching staff of Emory Ballard, A&M's new football coach. The Aggies had a simple request. Fly recruits to College Station to tour Texas A&M and to play football. He would spend weekends in the winter and spring for the next 14 years and three coaching changes flying recruits to visit Aggieland and taking coaches to functions around the state. 1963 proved to be a pivotal year for the young couple. He and Doris had their second son, Wendell. He started his own traffic control business and he continued to work for J.H. Strain and Sons. The traffic control business, contractor service company, would eventually grow from being a one-man operation at a desk in his bedroom to having its own office and yards in Abilene and San Angelo. It was also around 63 that he and Mr. Strain, along with a few others, really got into cattle with the purchase of the Half Moon Ranch in, over in Fisher County. The 70s saw his involvement with cattle grow a little more, and then in the 80s, he would meet the manager of the Bar G Feed Yards, a man who would one day become his partner and good friend, Johnny Trotter. Then in 1989, he decided it was time to leave J.H. Strain and Sons and go into farming and ranching full time, though he would continue to own contractor service. 16 years later in 2005, he and Johnny bought a ranch they simply called the Lambert, north of Abilene near East Lake Road. And then a few years later added the ranch they called the Musgrave out off of Highway 351. A good friend and rancher, Mike Alexander, once said of this man, 
I've never seen anyone who loves being around the cattle business more than he does. It was also about this time that he started getting involved in West Texas Rehab Center's Roundup for Rehab. For more than 30 years, he would donate livestock and cash and time to help the hundreds and hundreds of patients who come through the doors of the rehab every single day. But if you know this man at all, then you know his greatest love for his family, for his beloved Doris who passed last year, and for his son Randy and his wife Sheila, son Wendell and his wife Shelley, and his grandkids Hunter, Taylor, Alyssa, Belinda, and Katie. Yes, sir, he loves his family above all else. And he's taught them so many things like the value of honesty and integrity, the importance of leadership, giving to others, and of course, Texas A&M. His family knows you can never underestimate this man's willingness, eagerness, and ability to lend a helping hand to his fellow man in any and every situation. They also saw his absolute love and devotion he had for Doris as Alzheimer's took the final years of her life. Those are memories and life lessons they will never forget. I asked my friend Johnny Trotter to give me his thoughts on his old friend and partner, and he said this, when you ask me about my friend and the Harry Holt Award, I first have to say what an honor it is to have been a partner with him for some 20 plus years. He's as fine a Christian man, partner, and friend as I could have ever been blessed to have. I am very grateful for our lifelong friendship. Another dear friend of his, Randy Carson, said, well, one thing about him is that he doesn't ever want any attention or his name mentioned for the good he does. There'd be times we needed someone to buy the last fat at the telethon auction. So we'd call him up and he'd say, sure, I'll do it, but don't mention my name. That's just who he is. I guess he really does know how to do someone a good turn and not get caught. Well, my friend, Today is the day we are mentioning your name, Herman Lloyd, and it is my great honor and privilege to present you with a 2020 Harry Holt Award. The Rehab Center wasn't able to present this award in 2020, but I'm pleased that our most deserving award recipient, Mr. Herman Lloyd, is with us tonight at Rehab 2021. Here's a good friend of the Rehab Center, Mr. Johnny Trotter, to present the Harry Holt Good Neighbor Award. Thanks, Tran. And thanks, Herman, for joining us tonight. Certainly you continue the tradition of West Texas ranchers and the ranching industry and the late Harry Holt in supporting the West Texas Rehab Center. It's my privilege on behalf of the West Texas Rehab Center to present you the 2020 Harry Holt Good Neighbor Award. Congratulations. You, well, I've been surprised a few times in my life, <laughs> but I don't think I've ever been surprised like this. And I guess I can sum up pretty quick the way I feel about the rehab. It's somewhat the way I feel whenever I pay the insurance premium on my car. I sure hope I don't need it, but if I need it, I sure want it to be there. Yes, sir. So I want to thank everyone who has felt like I was worthy of this because I think that there's some people standing up on this stage that are a lot more cowboys than I'll ever get to be. But tonight, I'm grateful that I've had this opportunity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Herman, let me add my congratulations. Your support through the years for such programs as Roundup for Rehab and the Telethon help make them a success and to help through the hundreds of patients that depend every day on our clinicians and nurses for the care and treatment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Up next, up next on tonight's telethon is a very talented lady. I think so myself. <laughs> She's one of the newest members of the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame. She's a former Miss Rodeo Texas, Miss Rodeo America. She's the creative designer for STS Ranchware. She's also the brains behind it and the good looks. 
You've seen her on ESPN, CMT, and other networks, and even right here in uh, our local television in Abilene. Here's my lovely wife and the mother of our three beautiful children, Jennifer Smith. Well, thank you, Strand, and thanks for that introduction. We are back in the hospitality room with some great supporters of the Telethon and of West Texas Rehab. We're with Mike Riley with RHS Construction. He and his partner, Junior Hagler, have been involved in West Texas Rehab for quite some time, haven't you? That's correct. Uh, Junior's relationship started probably over 45 years ago with his little sister. She grew up in the rehab, so he has ties in that in that way, and then I started doing work about 20 years ago for the rehab. So going through the halls over all the, the last 20 years for myself, I've been able to see what they do and it just became something that was special to my heart. You talk about having family and friends that are involved. I feel like there is some sort of connection and that's why supporters stay a lifetime. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, there's nothing like uh, walking through the halls. You see the little kids, you know, they're learning things that that they can't believe that they're learning, the looks on their faces, their parents. It's just unbelievable what you see in the hallways. Talk about what you guys are doing right now. We are building a new hospice building in San Angelo. Uh, it's a pretty good sized project. We're very proud to be doing it with these guys. Uh, we plan to finish it in the next couple of months and turn it over to them guys. So see how that goes. R RHS Construction is a commercial construction company. That's correct, that's correct. And uh, Hagler Painting is involved with us as well. So. Uh, we're teaming up to do uh, as a sponsor for these guys. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Also with us is, to, is Mr. Steve Martin, the CEO. And we're going to see you several times tonight. But it was important for you to be here tonight with us to talk about these guys, wasn't it? Absolutely. You know, uh, Mike mentioned, uh, you know, Junior's relationship with the center, but Mike and my relationship goes back over 20 years, you know, whether it's, you know, raising kids together, being at the lake together, playing slow pitch softball together. Uh, you know, we've done a lot, a lot of things, as, you know, personally as a family. And then, you know, when I came to the rehab center, he was already involved in, in what was going on at the rehab center, and we just continued that relationship. What a small world. You have an extensive plan for San Angelo and this facility. Absolutely. You know, this facility is a 20,000 square foot facility. It will have house the Stevens Family Center for Hospice Excellence on the Ellen Brown campus. You know, Ellen Brown was a fundraiser for us for 37 years, and we're naming the campus after her. But it'll really bring five different off-site locations onto the center. So our hospice program, our bereavement program, our durable medical equipment program, our student program. We see over 100 students a year in all three of our locations, uh, you know, that come in and do their clinical affiliations and rotations with us to train. And so we provide free housing for them uh, when they do that. So this will bring them all on one campus. Now this is more of an expansion than creating new programs, right? Absolutely. You know, we, you know, when, when Hospice of San Angelo joined us, they merged with us in 2018. And one of the key things, you know, they were spread out all over San Angelo and the Concho Valley. And so we were like, you know, let's, our commitment was let's raise the money uh, to build that building. And so our donors came together, took us a little over, right at, year and a half to raise those funds and now you know in, in a couple of months that's going to come to fruition oh, so. we can't wait to see it next year we might know exactly what be able to look at it right absolutely and you'll actually one of the hospice pieces tonight get to see a, a rendering of it and some of the progress on it already so. awesome well thank you they also sponsor this hospitality room it is nice back here even if we're social distancing we're still getting to enjoy each other's company and raise money for a good cause back to you strand on stage and now we're going to pause for station identification. Thanks to our friends at Texas Roadhouse for sponsoring this hour of Rehab 2021. One of the most successful programs at the Rehab Center for more than 60 years has been the Cattleman's Roundup for Rehab. It's the oldest fundraising event. And again this year to enable our friends in the cattle industry an opportunity to show their continued support of, re of the rehab center, we held a cattle auction as part of this year's tel telethon. Here's Mr. Johnny Trotter, the owner of Bar G Feed Yard in Hereford and a member of the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame to tell you about our cattle auction. Mr. Johnny? Yes, Tran, uh, when Shelly Smith was running the rehab, he had the unique ability to pick out guys from different communities who'd be the, who'd help him get cattle for the Cattleman's Roundup of Crippled Children, which we called it back then. He wanted Bud Thurber in our community to, to be his chair. 
Bud and I were doing a lot of business at the time, and so, of course, he passed the baton on to me, and ser for several years, we'd go around, and I'd make a few calls, and we'd get guys from around the community to donate animals to, to the auction, and then we'd go pick them up and get Ellison Carter to haul them back to Abilene for the sale. Anyway, as it evolved, we started taking finished beeves to Abilene to the auction and sold them there. And one day, Danny Isabel came up to the feed yard and he and I were talking about how we could enhance it and make it better and in more inclusive for more people. And we kicked around the idea of having a video auction broadcast here at the rehab telethon. And that's where the concept originated. It turned into a pretty nice deal and everybody made it, and it made it easier for everybody to, for us to deliver the beeves to Eads Meats and Amarillo where they could be processed and picked up there. The buyers didn't have to go through the logistics of handling the cattle, transporting them and doing all that went with that. Worked out real well and it's been real gratifying to me and that's why I've stayed involved as long as I have. Then later on, midterm, kind of my tender with the rehab, the daughter of our old good friend uh, at San Angelo, Toad Tucker, got hurt in a car wreck. And of course, the rehab center was very instrumental for several years with them. That made it even made it more personal and special to me to help the Roundup. Kind of take the lead on it, try to get more people involved in it. First Financial Bank. Walter Johnson, Ken Murphy, and now Scott Deeser have always been big time supporters of it. Mike and Jim Alexander are good friends of mine and they've been involved in it for years and got, along with guys like Bob Morehouse and several of my friends through the cattle business, as you're well aware of. Uh, my partner Herman Lloyd has been a big time supporter of the auction for many, many years and has done many things that a lot of us don't even know anything about. Yes, it's been a lot of fun for me to have a relationship with Woody and then now Steve with the rehab. So I guess it's a camaraderie thing, you know, with people, people likes attract and, and we like to be associated with people who have like share a common goal. And uh, that's a pretty good reason to stay involved. It's a great cause that helps lots of people. And I'm proud to be part of it. Proud to be friends with people like Red Stegall and Strand Smith <laughs> and other people that are associated with the West Texas Rehab. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Johnny. It's uh, quite a tradition that y'all have started and continue here. And thanks to Abilene Livestock Auction for helping us with this year's auction. Now let's look at this year's auction. All right. Steers today are donated by Bar G Feed Yard in Hereford, Texas. We're going to sell the first steer. 1,500, 17 and a half. Everybody give it a 15, 17 and a half, 2,000. Everybody give it a 2 and a half. Everybody give it a 5. Everybody give it a 25. Everybody give it a 7 and a half. Everybody give it a 27 and a half, 3,000. Hit 3. Everybody give it a 3, 3, 3. I sold it. 27 and a half. BYMR, Abilene, Texas. Second steer donated. Sell it. Oh, 15, 17 and a half. 15, 17 and a half. We'll give it a give it a 2,000. We'll give it a give it a 2 and a half. We'll give it a give it a 21. We'll give it a 2. We'll give it a give it a 3. We'll give it a give it a 4. We'll give it a 5. Here, 25. We'll give it a give it a 4, 5. We'll give it a 6. We'll give it a give it a 7. We'll give it a 6. Sold it. 2,500. First Financial Bank, Abilene, in honor of Herman Lloyd and Johnny Trotter. They want to donate it back. Sell it again. Hey, 2,000, two and a half, 22 and a half. It'll give it a good five. It'll give it a good 25, seven and a half. It'll give it a good 27, high, 3,000. Hey, 3,000. It'll give it a good three, three, three. I sold it. 2,750. Friends of the Rehab, Abilene, Texas. Buys it. Next year, sell it. Hey, 2,000, 2,100. Hey, give it a give it a good one. It'll give it a good two. It'll give it a give it a give it a good two, three. It'll give it a good four. It'll give it a give it a good 20, three, four, five. It'll give it a give it a good 25. Hey, 25. I'm going to give it a good six. I'm going to give it a good 26, six, six. I'm going to give it a give it a good 26. I sold it. 2,500. Jordan Cattle Auction, San Saba, Texas. They want to donate it back. Sell it again. We'll give it a give it a give it a good two thousand twenty one. We'll give it a give it a good two and a half. We'll give it a give it a good five. We'll give it a good twenty five. We'll give it a give it a good seven and a half. We'll give it a good twenty seven and a half. Here's seven and a half. Three thousand. We'll give it a give it a good three, three, three. We'll give it a give it a good give me three. We'll give it a good three. Sold it twenty seven and a half. Randy and Barbara Ann Carson, Abilene, Texas.
is the buyer. All right, sell the next year. 15, 17, half, we'll give it a give it a good 17, half, 15, 17, half, we'll give it a good 17, half, 2,000, we'll give it a give it a good 2, 2, 2. Here, 2,000, we'll give it a give it a good 2 and a half, we'll give it a give it a good 5, we'll give it a good 25, we'll give it a good 7 and a half, we'll give it a good 27 and a half, 3,000, we'll give it a give it a good 3. Here, 3,000, we'll give it a give it a good 3,000, we'll give it a good 3,000, sold it. 27 and a half, Scott and Phyllis Tiny, Odessa, Texas. And the last year of the night, sell him. Here, 2,000. We'll give it a give it a good two. We'll give it a good five. We'll give it a good 22 and a half. We'll give it a good five. We'll give it a good 25, five, five. We'll give it a good 25, seven and a half. We'll give it a good seven and a half. We'll give it a good 3,000. Here, three. We'll give it a good three, three, three. We'll give it a good three. Sold it. 27 and a half. Buckeye Supply, Abilene, Texas. And they want to donate it to Love and Care Ministries. We're grateful to so many people for making our cattle auction a big success again this year. The auction raised $18,750 for the rehab center. Thanks to Mr. Johnny and Bar G Feed Yard for donating the cattle again this year and to our generous buyers. Our buyers tonight were Dean Berry, Trey Yarbrough, John McDonald, and Chuck Rogers. First Financial Bank, Friends of the Rehab, Jordan Cattle Auction, Randy and Barbara Ann Carson, Phyllis and Scott Tiny, and Buckeye Supply. Hey, Strand, let's, why don't we, uh, why don't, why don't uh, Jan and I just round that thing off to 25,000, add the rest of that to make it 25,000, and uh, do that in memory of uh, Mike Alexander, in honor of Herman Lloyd, and in honor of Red and Gail Stegall. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, Johnny, that makes the night even more special. Thank you so much. And thanks to our sponsors for the roundup for, the, for rehab and for supporting us every year. Uh, now it's my pleasure to welcome back to the stage three talented young ladies from Nashville. Here's Runaway June. Texas, we love you. What a joy it is 
for us to learn more about the West Texas Rehab Center and the many services and programs it provides to hundreds of patients every day. And one of the things that we really appreciate is how the center is dedicated to helping its neighbors. Family, friends, and the simpler things in life are so important to the three of us. So we commend the center for its mission of neighbor helping neighbor here in West Texas. And thank you guys so much for being here and helping too. Thank you. Guys, you know, I'm here in the auction area with a program that is near and dear to West Texas Rehab. We see them here every year, Hearts Remembered. It is a fundraiser for the hospice program. I'm here with Miss Angie Lang, Director of Hospice. Thanks for being with us again. Thank you. And again, we kick off um, for the whole, the rest of January and for the full month of February, our Hearts Remembered campaign. And um, what we're doing is we're taking in donations to remember those that we've lost and this display will be full hopefully by the end of the evening and it'll go on display at the mall of abilene for the month of february and it helps us to continue the mission of the rehab we can take care of each and every person regardless of their ability to pay 
Talk about what hospice does for family. So our hospice programs are here in Abilene and in San Angelo. We cover the big country and Concho Valley, and we see patients wherever their home is. That could be their own home, it could be assisted living, a nursing home, and sometimes we find folks in the hospital needing hospice care. And we were talking a little bit earlier, the global pandemic has actually expanded the need for hospice, hasn't it? Unfortunately, yes. COVID has played a big part in, in what we do, and we feel like everyone should have hospice care when it's needed. And um, for us, we're going to take care of COVID patients or any other patient that is at end of life and needs hospice. If people are not here to buy a heart here, is, are they going to have the ability to buy one at the mall? Absolutely. They'll be able to buy them on the weekends at the mall. They can also go to our website and buy them there and we'll fill out the names and we'll have that on display for them all through February. Well, I love you, sweet Miss Angie, and I've bought a heart before. I'll be buying another one. We um, thank you guys so much for what you do. My family was directly impacted by hospice and I know you make such a difference in people's lives. Thank you, Thank and you. have a good evening. You too, and speaking of affecting people's lives, we're gonna to toss now so that you can see a family that was directly impacted by hospice. At Hospice of the Big Country, we have the privilege of serving people at the most tender times of their lives, and we meet them right where they are. Tonight, we would like to share the beautiful story of Jennifer Rollins. She will forever remain in our hearts, and most likely yours too. With Jennifer, she was young. I mean, she wasn't supposed to go. She got sick about three years ago, and she got colon cancer, and it was out of nowhere. I mean, there wasn't, she had some symptoms. There was uh, uh, some stuff going on probably about eight months before they diagnosed her, but she, um, with no history, no anything, there, that was the last thing on her mind was that it would have been colon cancer. The option was hospice if that was the, the decision. And so we just kind of hugged and she cried and we both cried. And I didn't know the affiliation with West Texas Rehab, but it was hospice of the big country the treatment that was available through the hospice with the oxygen and and the in-home nurses and you know uh, the medications allowed her to basically you know have some dignity in those last few months if you want them to be at home if you want to try to have those last minutes with them those last days months whatever it is you need hospice some of the circumstances that people encounter in that situation is when they're battling cancer, not only do they lose their, their health, they lose their ability to work. So when they lose their ability to work, they lose their income, they lose their ability to pay rent, to pay health insurance, to do anything. When it's somebody like Jennifer, who's so full of life, man, she just loved her kids, she just loved, like anybody else, she just loved life. She had so much more and, you know, she just enjoyed the simple thing. She had a really bad childhood. She had to deal with so much adversity growing up. And a lot of people would not have even survived her childhood, but she did. And she rose above that and you guys enabled us to have those moments with her at the end. And, you know, we, I, we would not have been able to do that otherwise. In all the worries and concerns the Rollins family would face, how they would pay for their hospice care was not one of them because they never received a bill for our services. We take care of every patient and family on service, no matter if they can pay or they cannot. This is because of the generous donations from people just like you. Would you consider tonight making a donation and helping us to continue the great mission of the West Texas Rehab Center? 
Hospice care is such an important service to the rehab center in both San Angelo and Abilene. Our nurses and doctors provide special care to patients and their families who face difficult end of life decisions. And these patients are among the most precious people we serve. Right now, we want to take a moment to remember some special friends of the rehab center who we said goodbye to in 2020. Our love to all the families of those very special people recognized in that particular package here on the Ama telephone. Amazing folks. They really are. Uh, glad you joined us for Rehab 2021. We welcome back President and CEO of the Rehab Center, Steve Martin. Thanks, Charlie. It's always good working with you. Thank you, sir. A lot sir. of fun. It is. Can't believe it's flying by. Boy, it is. <laughs> you know, each year at the telethon, we remember a young man and a family who also were strongly committed to the Rehab Center. One of the first 17 patients to come through the door 68 years ago was a young man named Billy McDonald. When he first came to us, he couldn't walk and he couldn't talk, but he had a unique zest for life. Billy Mack was very determined, and his positive attitude enabled him to achieve many great things, the kinds of things our patients continue to do today. He was an inspiration to everyone. His father, R.W. McDonald, was dedicated to improving the life of his son. Their spirit lives on in the hopes of those patients we serve, and the hearts of those people who are serving each day at the Rehab Center. We created the Billy Mack Award 24 years ago to honor people with the same determination and commitment to the Rehab Center. Please watch this video about this year's very worthy recipients of the Billy Mack Award. When it comes to identifying the individual or individuals to receive West Texas Rehab's Billy Mack Commitment Award, what we usually find is someone who has benefited, either personally or through a family member, from the rehab services. They experienced firsthand the amazing care of this one-of-a-kind place. Or maybe it's someone who grew up working at the rehab, either as an employee or volunteer. Or maybe their parent or grandparent helped during the back-in-the-day years. It's not a written rule, just the way it always seems to happen. Which makes this year's recipients, Steve and Jan Smith, so exceptional. You see, Steve and Jan don't even live in a town that has a West Texas Rehab Center. Nope, they're 38 miles away in Sweetwater, Texas. They first heard about the rehab in the early 80s from Jack McCain, but didn't get involved with the rehab until 2009 when Jan went to her first rehab cattleman's roundup auction in Sweetwater. Heck, they're not even natives of Sweetwater, but I know they'd tell you they got here as fast as they could. You see, the Smith's journey couldn't have been more unpredictable, including how the two of them met. Steve lived in Dallas at the time and decided he needed himself a new chair for his office. Just so happens that the recent grad from Texas Tech, Jan Toland, was working there. Never underestimate the power of fine office furniture, because a year later in 1975, 
Steve and Jan married, and they were truly off to the races. From Arkansas to Dallas to Sweetwater to Jackson, Mississippi, to El Paso to Atlanta, back to Arkansas to Orlando, and finally, back to Sweetwater. From 1976 to 2005, Steve and Jan Smith, along with their six kids, Stephen, Callie, Toland, Kirby, Zach, and Mac, lived in 10 different communities. Most of the moves came as Steve moved up the chain of command with Cisco Foods, eventually becoming the executive vice president of Cisco Corporate. But enough was enough, and Steve and Jan in 2005 realized it was time to go home, which for Jan in particular was West Texas. But even more specifically, the ranch they had purchased a year earlier just outside of Sweetwater. They wanted to be there so bad that Steve commuted from Sweetwater until he retired in 2010. So where did this love for West Texas Rehab come from? Well, it started clear back in 1983 when the doctors at Scottish Rite Hospital in Atlanta told the Smiths, we don't think your son will make it through the night. But Tolan did make it through the night. And during the week or so Steve and Jan were at the hospital, they saw all of those kids with all kinds of injuries and disabilities. Jan said, it changed us. Then Jan saw a precious little boy from the nearby town of Roscoe at one of the rehab roundup auctions. He suffered from cerebral palsy and yet had made huge, even miraculous progress through his work with a therapist at West Texas Rehab. When she found out that that boy received much more than his insurance or family could afford, well, she had to know more. Before Steve knew what was happening, Jan had both of them on the rehab board while she and Riley Ann Price had turned the Sweetwater Roundup for Rehab Livestock Auction into the Sweetwater Roundup for Rehab Shrimp Field. Part of the Billy Mack Award reads, quote, the recipient's unrelenting commitment to the rehab's mission. Well, if you've ever had Jan try to get you to take part in the shrimp field, well, then you know about unrelenting. She and the folks of Sweetwater have gone above and beyond to grow the shrimp field to where it is today paying for all of the kids to attend camp rehab each summer free of charge. And now Steve is set to be the next president of the rehab board starting January of 22. This couple loves them some West Texas rehab. When asked what they want their legacy to be, Steve replied, we loved our family, we loved our community, we lived life large. Steve then added, everybody can contribute. If not money, then time or encouragement, but everybody needs to give back. It is West Texas Rehab Center's profound honor to present the 2021 Billy Mack Commitment Award to Steve and Jan Smith. In recognition of their commitment to the patient, staff, and mission of the West Texas Rehabilitation Center, we proudly present this award to Jan and Steve Smith of Sweetwater, Texas. This is very humbling and uh, it's a great honor to receive something of, of this magnitude. But this is not just a Stephen Jan Smith Award uh, are receiving. It's our children, our grandchildren. They've been very involved in our uh, love of the West Texas Rehab and they've, they've been involved in our Sweetwater uh, Shrimp Peel. And it also, we're accepting this in recognition of our fellow citizens of Sweetwater and Nolan County. And without those great people, none of this would be possible. So I will say from the bottom of our heart, how much we appreciate this honor and the people that support us as well as West Texas Rehab. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jan Smith, and I do want to say that this award is not exclusively to Steve and I, that it goes to our entire community of Sweetwater, Texas, which we're very fortunate and very blessed and thankful and grateful every day that we are part of to be able to be a part of that community. And the entire community steps out and supports us. And I just want to say thank you to them. I want to say hi to my six kids who aren't here with us tonight. But thank you all so much for coming out and supporting the rehab tonight also. And thank you, Sweetwater. I love everybody over there. You know, we can't, do, we can't thank you enough for everything you do for us. We love you both. The rehab would not be what it is today without you and folks like you. And so thank you very, very much. We're blessed to have you a part of our, our family. The, the blessing is ours. All right. Now we'll turn it back over to Charlie. All right. Good to see. Hello, the family watching at home there. Thank you, Steve. With me now to make a special announcement is John Berry, who is the chairman of the Board of Trustees for the Rehab Foundation. John, it's all yours. 
Charlie, today the McDonald family continues to help sustain the rehab center. Billy Mack's father, R.W., and his mother, Belle, were generous donors. They helped build our first building, and the estate of the family continues their investment in the center many years later. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to present this gift of $100,000 to the rehab center Whoa. from the estate of the McDonald family. How about that? $100,000? Wonderful. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. And thanks to Billy Mack and the McDonald family for encouraging us all to do what we can do to help the rehab center. I mean, this is a matching gift that actually will double your donations. That means your gift of 50 becomes 100. Your gift of 1,000 becomes 2,000 because of this matching gift from the McDonald estate. So please make that call now and make great use of that particular pledge as you double your gift to the rehab center. John, thank you very much. I'll let you take this back. I'm, okay, take good care of that if you would please. Now, here's a special message from one of our corporate sponsors. Black Plumbing has been blessed to serve your community and wants to thank you for your support. Because of you choosing Black Plumbing, you made it possible for Black Plumbing to grow and give back to you and your community. Black Plumbing enjoys providing the best plumbing service possible while also being engaged as a community partner with volunteerism and financial support where we can all thrive together. We ask you to check out their services and their commitment to the community at blackplumbing.com. Building a stronger community. Ekdal Nelson makes real estate happen. We provide world-class service by living out our company's core values. Honesty. Commitment. Relationships. Knowledge. Creativity. Loyalty. We thrive on providing the extra service that others will not. We work harder to understand your desires and to get the deal closed. Come experience the Ekdal Edge. Okay. You're watching Rehab 2021. Thank you for being with us tonight. Let's take a minute to remind you of our premium gift this year. Got it right here. For each of our friends who gives at least $250, we have a beautiful full color Rehab Center 2021 calendar to send you. Let me flip it open here because it'll show the focus of our, our stars tonight. Neil McCoy, Runaway June right there. It's actually a 13 month calendar to remind you of the events, people and missions of the Rehab Center. So please call our toll free number and make your contribution and get your name on the list for the 2021 Rehab Calendar. Steve Martin is back. Got a lot of friends showing up tonight uh, with a with big support of the Rehab Center here, Steve. And uh, we have, uh, I think, another person to rehab, I mean, another person to not only <laughs> recognize, but they're here to support the rehab center. I'm trying to get my words all together here. This mask makes me a, just a, a mess, Max Sage, you know? It's so hard to breathe, isn't it? It really <laughs> is. You have to come out here to breathe. But anyway, welcome back. Thank you for having me. You bet. Uh, anyway, Gary Decker of Decker Capital Partners in Stanford, Texas, is a former chairman of the board of directors for the rehab center. He's now a member of the board of directors for the rehab center and a trustee for the rehab foundation. Absolutely, and I know Gary has a special place in his heart for the Rehab Center. When he was young, a member of his family was treated at the Rehab Center, and since that time, he's had numerous other family members treated here as well. He always says our motto of good things happen here isn't just a cliche. Right. He's personally seen the benefits his family, friends, and so many others have received as patients. And Gary believes, as I do, that the staff is one of a kind with a true calling to work at the Rehab Center. It's not just a job for them. He's proud to serve this organization that helps anyone who walks in the door, regardless of their financial ability to pay. Gary's business, Decker Capital Partners, supports the Rehab Center and sponsors our Telethon Tow Board every year. He is very involved with the community. In addition to serving on the Rehab Center Board for 15 years, he has been on the board of the NOAA Project and Stanford Hospital District. Gary's at home tonight recovering from COVID-19 and not quite ready to venture out but he wanted to say a sincere word of thanks for his support and friendship to the Rehab Center. Gary, we love you. Get better soon. Yeah, we send our best to Gary and his family. Decker Capital Partners is an affiliate of Raymond James Financial Services and offers personalized financial planning to business owners, families, nonprofit organizations, and retirees. Now, please watch this from Decker Capital Partners. While you may not be running an architectural firm, tending hives of honeybees, and mentoring a teenager, your life is just as unique. A Raymond James Financial Advisor gets to know you, your passions, and the way you help others. 
so you can live your life. That's Life Well Planned. The Rehab Center appreciates the support of Decker Capital Partners. Thanks, Gary, and get well, my friend. We're sorry you can't be here with us tonight. Yeah, I was hoping to see him tonight. That's why I was so boo 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 I couldn't <laughs> talk a moment ago. Well, speaking of the toad, let's check it out. There's the fanfare. We'll see where we are at this point. Hey, $615,001. Okay, not bad, folks, but we can do a lot better. And, of course, you know, one thing about the auction, let me point that out, Steve. Uh, the, we were over there visiting last night. And when I walked in, I was thinking, okay, COVID-19, an unusual year. Uh, what are we going to see as far as auction items? I think you have more over there now than you did last year. What well, support? And the amazing thing is a lot of our national vendors, they really hit hard with, you know, can't get inventory. Right. Uh, you know, but a lot of our local community uh, leaders and businesses stepped up. And so it's really about these communities we serve that have stepped up to make that auction what it is. You know, this, uh, this auction started a few years ago and has become such an important aspect of the fundraising uh, during the course of the telethon. So the bidding is open till what, midnight tonight? So midnight tonight, yes. All right, so tell them where to go. West Texas. Go to westtexasrehab.org. And you don't even have to go to the app store. You can click on the QR code. If you've gone in a restaurant, you know what a QR code is with your camera. Click on that, it'll take you right to the auction. And that's really, you know, the, the call-in donations tonight and the auction really drive the success of tonight's telethon. You've got some, a lot of one-of-a-kind items over there. Yeah, 615 items to be exact. 15 of them got added yesterday. And so the, Really? And, and yeah. the quilts are always just charming every year. So anyway, make your bids right now. Be involved if you have. It's not too late to get involved, is it? Nope, For the bidding at all? At all? Okay, at all. check it out. And if all you right. want to go to bed, you can even get your uh, proxy bid in. <laughs> Okay. Oh. <laughs> hey, do what you have to do, folks, all right? Hey, I, Steve, I like to brag about these next guys. They've been dear friends of the Rehab Center for many years. They perform with Red Sea Golf for thousands of fans across the nation, but they are most popular here in West Texas entertaining us at the telethon. So while Red is home recovering, hey, Red, we're happy to have him return to our stage, which kind of keeps him out of trouble as well. So here's Red's band, The Boys in the Bunkhouse. Five times, baby, four, five times, baby, four, five times, baby, four, five times, man, me's delight doing things right, four, five times, baby, four, five times, and maybe I sigh, maybe I'll sigh, and maybe I cry, and maybe I'll cry, but if I die, I'm gonna try, four, five times, four, five times, woody, 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 woody. Five 
Thank you. We so enjoy our trips to Abilene every year with Red for this telethon. The Rehab Center has been helping the good people of West Texas since it was founded in 1953. And your gifts each year during the telethon help sustain the center and make it possible for the life-changing treatment for hundreds of children and adults every day. So please call in your donations to our volunteers tonight while we sing another one of our old favorite songs. back to the Vexus Fiber Phone Bank. As you can see, our volunteers over here are hard at work tonight, taking your phone calls with your gifts and pledges. Actually, I heard one of them scream while I go, we got $5,000. Something's changing tonight. You know, we have our regular years on the West Texas Rehabilitation Center Rehab Telethon, but then there are some years that feel special. And I was thinking about that tonight, you know. During this pandemic, a lot of people haven't been able to take a vacation. They didn't get to spend that money going out to restaurants. And maybe, just maybe, some of that money is going to come to help the people here at the Rehab Center. And don't forget the gift from the McDonald Estate. That's going to double your donations tonight. So if you donate that Cancun vacation that you didn't spend it on, that $5,000 could become $10,000 if you do it right now. With me are two friends, 
who work throughout the year to help the rehab center. They serve as board members for the rehab center. Please say hello to John Berry of Abilene, who is chairman of the board of trustees of the Rehab Foundation, and Rick Mantooth, a friend of mine from San Angelo, who's vice chair of the Rehab Center Board of Directors. John, I wanted to ask you, now, during this pandemic, a lot of people were laid off, a lot of businesses went down, but the board of the Rehab Center did something different. Could you tell us about what they did? Rick, early on, or, uh, Brad, early on, the board decided that we were going to do everything we could not to lay anyone off, not to furlough anyone, and we were able to maintain that thanks to the help of our donors. Our donors have been fantastic coming through and supporting us through this pandemic. Uh, it's been tough, but uh, the board's gone above and beyond a lot what a lot of other organizations have done. We have not laid anyone off. We have not had to furlough anyone. We actually had some programs where we were able to help some of our, our uh, employees whose spouse or family member was laid off or furloughed. Um, we went, you know, set up a program to actually bonus them some to be able to carry them through. Um, you know, we've really been blessed by donors and, and the strength of our foundation and being able to carry us through this pandemic. and. Um, uh, it's been it's been good for our employees and and you know we've seen an upsurge in need for care because of people losing their insurance being laid off yeah. our demands increased so you know we we had to have those clinical people and those employees to take care of the the people that are needing care today yeah well that's really great to hear you know what you just brought up there now this has been many many years ago but my family at the time didn't have any money to treat my to help treat my brother and that was what made the huge connection between my family and the rehab center was that i mean we literally went there with no money and they said come on in we will treat you and that's that's what made our connection to the rehab center since 1963 so i understand that how long have you been involved brad i really don't even remember <laughs> <laughs> a tough question not, huh? not as long as you but but um well over 20 years wow. uh, and uh, I, I was past chairman of the board of over over 10 years ago and uh, it's really been an honor and a privilege to be able to give a little something back uh, because of just what you're talking about the fact that the rehab center turns nobody away yeah regardless of their circumstances uh, they they find a way to help anyone that needs that care um, and for me it's really been a a privilege and an honor to be able to to help just a little bit in that uh, in that mission thank you so much mr rick tell me about your experiences here at the rehab well how I've, long you've been with them how long I, I you know i'm i'm like john i don't really remember when it was that i first got involved with the rehab i know that it was uh, many, many years ago. Rehab had established a, a place in San Angelo, and, and I kind of watched from a distance and then began getting involved with raising money for rehab and working uh, from a volunteer uh, side. Thank, thank the Lord I have never been a patient of the rehab. Wow. I have uh, visited and have, uh, have received treatments um, you know, once in a, in a blue moon, but, uh, but not really a regular patient of rehab. But I watch um, as those folks who, who run the rehab center, uh, how they take care of their employees and thus take care of the people who come to them on a daily basis, the least and the last and the lost and, and those who need those services. Uh, and truly without regard for their ability to pay is just something magical that happens uh, with, uh, with these wonderful people who I believe are doing the work that God called them to do in that place and in this time. And how do you not get excited and passionate about a, a situation like that? You know, John was talking about the fact that, that we wanted to take care of these, uh, these employees, these uh, technicians, these uh, uh, rehab uh, workers, uh, we wanted to take care of them because they are some of the best in the world at what they do. And to tell them you're going to have to go someplace else to apply your craft, 
but we want you to come back someday. <laughs> How are you going to do that? Yeah. And so through the incredible generosity of our donors, the wonderful foundation that's been established, we were able to say, you just keep your job and we're going to hang on to you and we're going to take care of you because you're taking care of those who we care about. Thank you so much. Thanks to both of you. It is the West Texas way. And thank you to our friends at Vexus Fiber for sponsoring the phone bank for tonight's telethon. And our sponsor for tonight's auction is Ectol Nelson Real Estate. And we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you very much, Brad. Don't forget those auction items. Uh, you still have a shot at them until about midnight tonight. So check it out and get your bid in. And now we welcome back to the telethon stage a very talented young singer and songwriter from Nashville who's also a college student only a year and a half away from graduation. Right. Here's Ryan Page, everybody. Hello, Telethon. It's a pleasure to be here. Here's a song that I wrote with my friends called Nolan Boy. What did you think I was everything? I never promised you a wedding ring. Wasn't it written all over my face? You were a love I could replace. Ooh. Ooh. Who am I?
I am so blessed to be here tonight for my fourth telethon. And the talented entertainers I share the stage with every year truly amaze me. But the most amazing people really are the children and the adults that I see when I visit the center. They come every day for therapy and many other services that the center provides. Your gifts are so important to us as they make these services possible and the success of these stories possible. So if tonight, some word or video in tonight's telethon touched your heart, I encourage you and challenge you to call in your gifts right now to benefit the rehab center. Met you in October, you talk sweet and a little slow And I thought, mm, I think I, mm. Warm eyes on your hands cold, you sing soft like a sore throat And I thought, mm, I think I, mm. And I knew you were dangerous, I saw through your games and played them myself for letting you win but I could write ten songs but not wish you said it's over only took you eight days to forget seven months together we were up to six in the morning five days a week you said forever then left before I counted to three and loved you a little too much but I was never I was never the one you met me on a Friday, I dressed up like a first date So you think, mm, I think I, mm. And I knew we loved when you stayed past 2 a.m. And I thought, mm, does he think, mm. And I knew you were dangerous, I saw through you Right. Ten songs from nine ways you said it's over Only oh, took you eight days to forget Seven months together And we were up till six in the morning Five days a week you said forever then left Before I counted to three you loved you a little too much But I was never, I was never the one Met you in October you talk sweet and a little slow And I thought you're it I think I'm falling Now I could write ten songs But not wish you said it's over Only took you eight days to forget Seven months together Took a little too much We were up till six in the morning Five days a week You said forever than left Before I counted to three Loved you a little too but I was never, I was never the one Loved you a little too much But I was never, I was never the one Thank you, Ryan. Good to see you again again this year. And now let's pause for station identification. You are watching Rehab 2021. We'd like to take a moment to say special thanks to the sponsor of this hour of tonight's telethon, RHS Construction. You are appreciated. Now, with more information about a telethon tradition, we go across the way here at the convention center and join Jennifer Smith. Hi, Jennifer. And what a tradition it is. Thanks, Charlie. I am in the auction area with the amazing quilts that all of the quilters in the entire community provide every single year. It's one of my favorite parts of this auction. I'm here with Denise Bruner right now. She's with the Abilene Quilters Guild. Talk about this program we have. We are so excited to participate every year with the West Texas Rehabilitation Center with the telethon and make quilts because that's what a quilter's heart is. A quilter takes little scraps of fabric and makes something and has to give it away to somebody they love and it's all an act of love. A lot of these quilts we did as part of a, 
a, a group like the one I did. I had uh, Cassandra gave me the fabric to start the middle of it, and I added to that, pieced it together, um, put the batting and the backing in, took it to our Quilt Haven, Marcy Riley shop, and um, they, uh, Claire and Elle Murray is the one that um, quilted it for me. So wow. it was a group effort, and we like to do that. We get together, and we sew together. We have sew days, and we come up with quilts for the rehab telethon. We've been doing it for over 50 years. That is amazing, and it really is a labor of love. I see several ladies' names on here year after year. They have provided for for several years, haven't they? Yes, they have. Uh, tons of ladies have done that, and ladies all over the big country. Uh, the Concho Valley, San Angelo, I've seen lots of different ones from here. Uh, quilt, other quilt guilds, and, and not just quilts, there's Afghans. Yes. Um, there's all kinds of crochet and knitting over there, and just some beautiful things that people could get on the website and put their bids on. Do you have to, um, do you have to, Gather. Do you have a plan every year of what you're going to do for this year's auction? Um, we have some suggested ideas, and so like Cassandra Lancaster put together a sew day and uh, had suggested suggested ideas for quilters to come mm -hmm. and provided fabrics for them to go ahead and start the project. Or you could do one of your own. So uh, it's up to you what size you do and and what uh, contribution you want to make to the telethon every year. Do you keep track of the auction? Um, I got on there today, <laughs> I will confess. I got on there today and saw how it was going, and I was really excited, uh, wanting to bid on some of the quilts myself. That's the way so, I am. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting, and the money that it brings in to help people, which is close to my heart because my mom and dad were treated at the West Texas Rehab Center. and Well, that's and, what I was just yeah. going to say. It, it, people have patience from the Rehab Center, and then it becomes a true labor of love. Yeah, I know a few families that have not been touched by the Rehab Center. My mother used to make uh, bags to go on walkers and gave them away every, uh, every year. So uh, just exciting things to happen, and we're so excited to be a part of it. Well, we're so glad that you guys are a part of it, and I know it is, it's emotional, isn't it? It really is. It's emotional, and we love for any quilter to come and be a part of it, come to our sew days and join us. Um, we meet once a month, uh, every second Monday, and so come awesome. join us, come quilt for the rehab telephone. That is awesome. Well, as yeah. you can see, beautiful quilts here today. There are still, it's still a couple of hours for you to get on either handbid or westtexasrehab.org and place your bid for one of these beautiful quilts. Now we have Neil McCoy again. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, Neil and the guys are just now getting set. They've, they've been out in the parking lot, I don't know, shooting dice or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, baby needs shoes. Baby needs shoes, right. Yeah, they were shooting dice. Okay, you ready? You ready, my friend? I love this song you're about to do. You'll understand why. Ladies and gentlemen, here again, Neil McCoy. <laughs> he said, Neil McCoy. Thank you very much. They turned you off, Charlie. Now, Charlie cried music. I've always got a smiling face Anytime in any place Every time they ask me why I just smile and say You've got to kiss that angel good morning And let her know you think about her when you're gone Kiss that angel good morning Love her like the devil when you get back home. People may try to guess the secret of a happiness, but some of them never learn that it's a simple thing. The secret that I'm speaking of. Love her like a devil when you get back 
That's a little Charlie Pride music. Uh, as you well know, we lost Charlie. Golly, about, well, it's right there, December the 12th. I had no idea. It's already been about a month and a half ago. I got my start with Charlie Pride. 1981, I won a contest in Dallas, Texas. Janie Fricky. Anybody remember Janie Fricky? She was one of the judges of the finals. She was being booked by Charlie Pride's booking and management agency. And she, uh, she said, I'd love to introduce you to Charlie sometime. I think he could help. He had already helped. Mill Sapp, Earl Thomas Collin, Dave and Sugar, and a lot of other folks get started. And, uh, and I, my wife and I went up to meet him in uh, Dallas, Texas. They took us around. And Charlie hired me on the road and let me come out and open shows with him for about six or seven years in the 80s and gave me the opportunity to just get out on stage with his band. Uh, and so I recorded an album of Charlie Pride music about six or seven years ago. Uh, it's called Pride, and, and it is my tribute to him. I came to him and, and asked him if I could do it. And, he said, yeah, what songs are you going to do? And I said, I don't know, Charlie. You have 30-something number one songs. I'll pick some. So I picked 13 of them. That was one of them, and this one right here. And matter of fact, on that album, Darius Rucker came in and sang with me on that album. And, uh, and Trace Atkins actually came in and sang with me on this one. It's, called, it's my favorite Charlie Pride song called Roll On Mississippi. And it's a duet with Trace and I, but he ain't here. So I got to do it by myself. But I'll try and do my Trace Atkins impression when we get there. It's called Roll On Mississippi. When things were a little slower, you get by the riverside and just kind of take it easy. Come on, guys. Hold on. Uh oh, we don't have anything. Uh oh, our guitar. Hey, uh, are you gonna play that one? What you gonna do? Are you playing harmonica? Ah, uh, that is a Puerto Rican Billy Joel right there. Y'all ever, y'all ever been to a Puerto Rican Billy Joel show? Tell the truth. Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> hey, don't turn that up too loud in the mix. You ready, Tom? We're going to do this. It usually goes with an acoustic guitar, but it's electric. Now. If you know this song, close your eyes. Put yourself on the riverbank, the Mississippi River. When things are a little slower, a little easier. No phones. Barefoot and fancy free Big river boat Just passing a spot She's headed for New Orleans There she goes Disappearing around the bend Roll on Mississippi Make me feel like a child Roll on, Mr. 
Mississippi, carry me home. Now I can see I've been away too long. Roll on, Mississippi, roll on. Here's where Trace came in. The world's spinning round too fast for me. I need a place to dream So come to your banks I'll sit in your shade Relive the memories Tom Sawyer And Huckleberry Finn Roll on Mississippi Make me feel like a child again Roll on Mississippi childhood dream I grew up on Roll on Mississippi Carry me on Now I can see I've been away too long Roll on Mississippi Roll on, roll on, Mississippi, roll on. Roll on, roll on, Mississippi, roll on. Thank you all. Thank you all. Hang around. We look forward to coming back, coming back for a, a lot more music. Anybody enjoying the West Texas Rehab Telethon tonight? at home doing a great job. Thank you, we'll be back in a little while. I'm standing in front of what will be the Stevens Family Center for Hospice Excellence. And by the time you see this video, this building will be just about complete. This project will bring our hospice and bereavement programs under one roof, combining all of rehab services at the San Angelo campus, named for Ellen Brown. In March of 2018, Hospice of San Angelo became part of West Texas Rehabilitation Center. And we knew right then that one of our main goals was gonna to be to bring them on campus. And that's what this construction project's about. It's about bringing our, our new hospice program here in San Angelo onto the main campus of West Texas Rehab Center. Our staff have a central starting point because Hospice of San Angelo had three different locations off campus prior to this project. So their DME was in one area, their bereavement center was one area and their office building was in another area. And we were able to bring all three of those centers on campus and operate off of our main treatment campus on Jackson Street in San Angelo. What this building means to Hospice of San Angelo is it will be a place where we can create an environment of teamwork. Three locations now becoming one, all under one roof on the rehab campus. I am so excited for this and so is the staff at Hospice of San Angelo. We will be able to serve our patients better because of the cohesiveness of a team. Alongside the hospice project, this building allowed West Texas Rehab to combine two facilities as well. So we had off-campus facilities for our student house and for some off-campus storage and those are all part of this building now. So we essentially brought five different buildings located all over San Angelo onto the West Texas Rehab Center campus with this building. Um, our student center, we couldn't be more excited about it. Um, that's where we train a therapist from all over the country. And uh, when they're here in San Angelo, they need a place to stay while they're receiving their education. And we have that student, house, that student housing here on this campus um, as part of this project as well. West Texas Rehab would never be able to do a project like this without the support of our donors. Just in the same way that they support our patient care each and every day, they jump in when we have capital projects. And uh, without their support, this would never happen. We would never be able to have this new level of functionality and operational ability without their support. If I could speak for everyone at Hospice of San Angelo, we would like to say thank you. Thank you for this beautiful gift, a place to call our very own. Great things happen at the West Texas Rehab, and thank you for making this happen. Ekdal Nelson makes real estate happen. 
We provide world-class service by living out our company's core values. Honesty. Commitment. Relationships. Knowledge. Creativity. Loyalty. We thrive on providing the extra service that others will not. We work harder to understand your desires than to get the deal closed. Come experience the Ekdahl Edge. Hey, glad you're watching tonight. Welcome back to Rehab 2021. Right now, we want to recognize an Abilene family has been closely involved with the Rehab Center for more than 40 years. I know you've seen them many times on the telethon over the years. Tonight, they're not able to be with us as they celebrate the birth just this week of their first granddaughter, Olivia Lou Briley. I think they're going to call her Olivia Lou. That's sweet. And so, you know, they are just thrilled. So Preston now has a baby sister. We send our congratulations to the proud grandparents and Uncle Zach. Now, the family of Robert O'Brien of Abilene sincerely believes in the rehab center and its mission. They have been involved with the telethon every year since Zach was born, and he's now 42. They have been important people in the rehab story. Robert and his wife, Lou, were a young married couple with an infant son, Zach, who was born with spina bifida and hydrocephalus. They were initially devastated by the news of Zach's diagnosis, but the West Texas Rehab Center stepped in to help. As early as 1978, the Rehab Center began providing solutions for Zach with physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy that carried him through four dozen surgeries. Now, Zach said the Rehab Center made his treatment fun, gave him zest for life, and a positive attitude, and inspired his involvement in the community. Although paralyzed from the waist down and confined to a wheelchair, he's the number one fan of the Wiley Bulldogs. There you go, Zach. Robert was telling us about the family atmosphere and the culture of friendliness at the rehab center. And Lou recalls Zach's love for lamb chop. That's the stuffed toy given to him at the telethon by Sherry Lewis, a ventriloquist, children's entertainer, and TV host who appeared here at the telethon in the early 1980s. Well, through the years, Robert and Lou have been generous donors to the Rehab Center, and Robert also served on the Abilene City Council. As a young businessman, Robert owned a clothing store and Curtis Mathis television franchise. Later, he owned Rent City and Aaron stores. As a matter of fact, for many years, his stores donated television monitors used here at the convention center during our telethon. Tonight, we have a generous gift from the Briley family to get us started with our check presentations. From Robert, Lou, Zach, and the entire Briley family, I have it right here, it was just handed to me, this donation of $5,000. So thank you very much. We do appreciate your support. I was hoping to see you guys tonight. I miss you. And now with, uh, we have some more friends of the Rehab Center who are here to offer their support. Jennifer and Braid are on hand to say hello, ladies. We are, and we are so excited. Yes. This is one of my favorite oh, times because I just love seeing our donors and the people have that have given so generously. And this check, I think, is so amazing because it is actually the staff pledge. Miss Katie? Yes, my name is Katie Davis, and um, I'm honored tonight to present our staff pledge um, on behalf of all the employees at West Texas Rehabilitation Center. Um, I'm presenting a new record, uh, $62,000 oh in 20 years. Oh my goodness. That wow. is. Um, and I just know that we are very thankful, especially to our board of directors. Uh, the decisions they've made this past year, you know, it has proved to be an arduous one. And um, have we faced many challenges that we didn't expect. And, yes, you know, the decisions that they've made so that we can continue to do what um, we do. And I know myself and my fellow employees, just as healthcare providers, um, it's great to not have to worry and be able to continue to go into work and provide the best care possible for our patients, despite their financial circumstances, um, especially during times like we've had, um, and we just no longer have to you know, worry about that. Yeah. So. Well, I, I feel like one of the best compliments is when the, uh, the employees themselves give personally to a cause. That, that's the greatest compliment I think an organization can get. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Braid? 
All right, yeah, Jennifer, I gotta say, I've, I've known so many people from the rehab, uh, employees, I've been a patient, my son's been a patient, and every single one of them put their money where their mouth is, so I really appreciate that. Amazing to see that, and we have another dear friend of the rehabs with us right now again. Joining the broadcast is Mr. Albert Gutierrez with Next Star Broadcasting. Albert, you guys make it a point to raise money and, and do a lot for the rehab. Tell us why it's so important to you to, to do this every year. Well, this is very important to us, Bray, because I think that the, and I was mentioning some of that earlier, our mission, the mission mm -hmm. of our company is pretty much similar, very similar in, in, to the mission of, of uh, West Texas Rehab, which is to improve the lives of the folks that, uh, you know, live in the communities where we, where we work and where we operate. And so with that, you know, we feel that uh, this is a very worthy cause to do every year. So we look forward to this every single year. And even uh, the COVID year, even in the COVID year, you know, uh, we, we, we feel this even more important Absolutely. this time around, right? To be Absolutely. part of it. Yes. Share with us how much you've, you've done for us this year, Albert. Absolutely. Uh, right. So we uh, are very proud and very honored to present the $5,000 check on behalf of the employees of Nextstar Broadcasting Group that's at KTAP and KLST TV in San Angelo as well. So very proud to be part of that. So tell us how much you guys have raised for us. Yes, well, I, you know, I five thousand it's a five thousand dollar check. So that is uh, amazing. Thank you so much you for bet. all that you Thank do. Thank you much. Appreciate I appreciate it. it. All right, Thank back you. to Jennifer. Thank you. And now I am with Mr. Bill Flowers with Vexus Fiber. Let's talk about your donation. Hi, Jennifer. On behalf of Texas Fiber, we'd like to donate this $5,000 to the Rehab Center. We're proud to support the mission they have, proud to serve the community of Abilene. So, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Braid? Okay, yes, we are here with some very yummy guests, people that I'm sure if you, you've probably been to their restaurant and enjoyed a couple thousand peanuts, right? Well, we appreciate the couple thousand dollars that you have raised. I'm sorry, spoiler alert, but Texas Roadhouse is here with Sam and Mandy Holt. We appreciate you guys so much for being here. Uh, tell us, you're obviously great supporters of the rehab. Tell us what you brought for us tonight. Well, we are really, really proud to be partners with the West Texas Rehab. It is at the heart of Texas Roadhouse to be involved in our, in our community and supporting the people that live here in Abilene and the big country. And to be able to partner with an organization like West Texas Rehab that is like-minded is really, really close to our hearts. So we appreciate it. So glad to hear that. Tell us what you've brought for us tonight. Well, we brought a check for 2,500 and Woo! just many other things that we've done with the rehab. Absolutely. We just are happy to pair with them and, and, oh, yeah. and lots of food. So. Yeah, I've eaten several of your, your meals at, at events. So we thank you so much for all your support and contributions. God bless you. Thank all you. All right, we're gonna head back to Jennifer with some more checks. That's right, and now I'm with Mr. Joe Cook of the Abilene Runners Club. How are How you? How are you? Doing good. Talk about what your association has done for rehab. So every year we put on the uh, Turkey Trot 5K yes, on uh, Thanksgiving. This year was a little different with all the COVID stuff. So we kind of had to brainstorm a little bit and come up with a new way to do it. We made it a more socially distant event. We um, opened the time up where they could run anytime with their families or run virtual. Um, we That's cut awesome. our cost quite a bit. Awesome. So we could maximize how much money we could give to rehab. So. That is great. Let's see that check. So this year we we're able to do $10,000. So we were pretty, pretty happy with that. Thank you. Yes. Give them a round of applause. Thank you guys Thank you very so much. much. Bray? Yes, all right, I'm here with some uh, familiar faces. I'm sure you've seen this guy a couple, 10 times tonight, but we're back with Ekdal Nelson Real Estate and a special guest, Mr. Everett, Everett, I understand? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm playing favorites because I have a son named Everett at home too. <laughs> anyway, I, we just cannot thank you enough for all that That's you've fine. done tonight to uh, support the rehab and throughout the year. It, it means a lot to us. It means a lot to the people at home. Tell us what you've brought for us tonight, John. Uh, Braid, we've got a check here for uh, twenty thousand dollars. Yep, I mean if that's if that's not impressive, I don't know what is. After everything it's you've a done, pretty and pretty impressive organization. I, I agree. We appreciate the heart that you have and all the employees that donate and give so much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right, Jen. And now we have Miss Connie Harrison. We are with the Beta Sigma Phi, and you guys help with the phone bank. Yes, we've been doing that since the uh, rehab started. So. Uh, Wow. I've done it for 47 years, so I missed a few years. Wow. But, uh, 
Well, I mean, where were you 47 years? We needed you all 47. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a little yeah. different tonight, yes, wasn't it? it's very different tonight. Talk about how you changed the program a little bit. Uh, we're socially distanced six feet apart, uh, hand sanitizers, face mask, and uh, we're just not getting the calls. We've got some large calls amounts, but we need more calls to and, come in. And you split your volunteers. You usually have 30 out there. You did yes. 18 and 18. 18 and so 18 that, tonight. So well. uh, with the COVID, some of them couldn't come, but uh, we're here full force. We are so grateful for you. Thank we're you. We're so grateful. Talk about your donation. We'd like to donate $200 to okay. the rehab this year and uh, thank you so appreciate much. all the work you're doing. We appreciate every dollar. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Braid. That's right, Jen. Every dollar counts. Yes, ma'am. We appreciate it so much. It's been a tough year changing everything up for COVID. But the, the one thing I can tell you, you always need good therapists and good plumbers. And I'm here with some people that know all about plumbing with Black Plumbing and Maverick Saw Cutting and Core Drilling. Introduce yourselves for me, fellas. I'm Brad Brazel. Mike Hayden. Chris Black. Mike Hayden. <laughs> yes, please tell us what you've done for the rehab this uh, year, guys. Uh, the, re the rehab means a lot to us. So um, we like to plug into the community and we have an office here in Abilene and in San Angelo. So we connect and, and, and help out in both both areas and the rehab just helps uh, help what they do for the community and we try to give back to the rehab and all that we can do. So You guys have been loyal, loyal sponsors and, and partners with the rehab for years. It means a lot to us and uh, your donation certainly means a lot to us. I'm not going to say it because it is quite impressive. I want you to tell people how much you guys have raised throughout the year. Um, from both of our companies, Black Plumbing and Maverick, we donated $30,000 to the rehab this year. So, I got to give you a hand for that. Thank, thank the, thank, it's all our, our customers and the, the communities that we're involved in that allows us to be able to give back to great organizations like the rehab. Well, we appreciate it, and we hope that we can continue this wonderful yep. relationship for years to come. Thank you, guys. I'm going to let you all walk back, hand the mic to Denise. Now, I'm going to tell you about this next guest as she comes forward. This is somebody I hope you've come to appreciate and count on coming every year because we sure have. This lady right here, come right over here, Denise, if you want to. This is Denise Dennis, and she has been with us. Man, how many years, Denise, have you been doing this for us? 42, yes. 42? 42. 42 years. This wonderful woman has hit the pavement and raised money for the rehab. And you know how she's done that? She has collected cans throughout the year, throughout the year. And she raised, let me tell you how much money she raised from cans alone, $430. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So she does that, and she also goes out and raises money from other people in her family. Skeet Dennis, we appreciate you, Bobby Connolly, and Natasha Howard. So all together, do you want to tell them how much money you raised today? For $670. $670. Now, Denise, I want to say real quick, because this is one of the years, if any, that we would understand if you weren't here. So it means an awful lot that you're here today. Yeah, I, I, I just want to be able to help the Richard Smith have seen you. I, this year has been so hard for me. And on Facebook, every day, since November, I've been writing down what I, what I am thankful for every day. Oh, Denise, I love that. And I would like for all the people that know me or email to call in because they need us. We, 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 the great teachers we have here have taught so many, many, taught me how to walk and talk and use my hands. And mom, my mama told me that Sherry Smith was my first PT, my, oh, wow. my first PT and taught me how to walk. Wow. That is, that is really special, Denise. I'm so glad that you're here and you're sharing your story. And she's right. She needs you, and we need you to call right now and make that donation go as far if as it, it can. If it wasn't for God and we have, I'd be a retail. 
Well, you worked pretty hard to keep that from happening yourself. It takes a lot, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. Well, we are so happy that you're part of our rehab family, and we are going to also thank another wonderful sponsor. We have Mr. Carwash. Uh, they donated $2,400 to Rehab 2021. And we have another important message now from one of our corporate partners. Black Plumbing has been blessed to serve your community and wants to thank you for your support. Because of you choosing Black Plumbing, you made it possible for Black Plumbing to grow and give back to you and your community. Black Plumbing enjoys providing the best plumbing service possible while also being engaged as a community partner with volunteerism and financial support where we can all thrive together. We ask you to check out their services and their commitment to the community at blackplumbing.com. Building a stronger community. Mobility and independence has always been a high priority for patients of the West Texas Rehabilitation Center. Many of the videos you've seen tonight feature patients on wheels, specifically trikes. By partnering with the AMBUX organization, the rehab staff has made many of these trikes available to patients to use at home. Here is pediatric physical therapist Megan Cheek to tell you more about it. So a group of pediatric therapists here at rehab discovered a need about five years ago in working with our kiddos, um, and that was the need for adapted bicycles. So um, bicycles are, riding, learning to ride a bicycle is sort of a rite of passage in childhood that we noticed that a lot of our kids were not getting to take part in because of the certain physical abilities that they do or do not have. And so, um, what they, what they needed was a specialized kind of bicycle, not just the kind that you would buy in the store. And there's a really great company called Amtrak that makes bicycles that are specially adapted for kids with special needs. And so we were able to partner with Amtrak, which is the company that makes them, and an organization called Ambux that is a national organization uh, who uh, raises funds to purchase these bikes for kids who was special needs. My son's name is Jace and so he was born with Down syndrome and he's two years old now and has been coming to rehab for almost two years now. We started in December of 2018. We see Joe Beth and Shaylee and Christy and Lisa and have seen other therapists too along the way and every single one of them just treats treats us all wonderfully and so it's just been an incredible experience. So this gift of a bike has been, I just don't even have words for it. It's really just such a blessing. We formed our local chapter about five years ago. So in 2015, um, we as therapists came together and started the process. And since that time, we've been able to raise funds and give away 115 bicycles to kids in this area. Most of them are our patients. And um, because we as therapists sort of recommend evaluation for who might need one of the bicycles. We've also had some resources referred in from other therapists as well and so we've been able to provide bikes for a lot of kids and really enjoyed getting to watch their faces light up when they get their own bicycle and we've had some really great input from families on how it affects the, the families. Um, we've had moms say you know I can take we can take our family to the park now and I can put my son on his bike and not worry about him falling, not worry about him running away, and we can go and get outside as a family that we were never able to do before. Hey guys, I'm back in the auction area again near the concession stand and I'm with Randy Bryan with Red Chain Feeds and you guys have had quite a relationship with West Texas Rehab. Yes, we have. Let's talk about it a little bit. You provide meat for some of the production sales. Yes, we, we provide actually a whole meal for most of the pro production sales. And then we also do, uh, uh, just like this right here, uh, I've got my own. We do a lot for the cattle raisers. Uh, Red Chain's a big sponsor of this. Well, you also have a partner, don't you? Uh, well, Red Chain is my partner here, and then I've got my own. Uh, business as well, where we, we have a full catering service as well. Well, talk about you and John Fritz have a huge connection to West Texas Rehab. You watch the kids at these sales and the people that are affected by the rehab. 
talk about that a little bit. Okay, yeah, John is, uh, John has, whenever they first came to him, I guess probably 10 years ago, he got right on board and, and he come and talked to me about it and, and, and we agreed that I'd do all the cooking and, and uh, he would he would back everything anytime they've come to him. He's always, and I asked him one time, I said, John, do you ever get tired of this? And he said, no. He said, this is the right thing to do. And he stays right on task with that every single year. Well, and I've noticed that even through, you know, times like this year, people haven't backed down. They really believe in this cause. Oh, absolutely. And uh, uh, I know whenever John and I talk uh, back in December, he's like, whatever you feel like, whatever you're comfortable with, you just do whatever. He said, and I'll be right there backing you. And this guy's pretty humble, but he is a very good cook. Like, I've heard the best brisket in Texas. Well, I've, I've yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. And uh, the Texas Southwestern Cattle Raisers, they, they use me almost exclusively. Well, that says a lot right there. Guys, if you have a chance, if you're here, come down to the concession stand for a pork brisket sandwich. And right now, we're going to go back to some Runaway June. Thank you all so much. We can see that the Rehab Center attracts some of the biggest names in country music. 
And two years ago when we were here, we shared the stage with two legends, Ricky Skaggs and Red Steagall. And tonight, we're here with another giant in our industry, Neil McCoy. We can easily see why they are willing to pitch in and help the rehab center. It's a special place that provides life-changing treatment for hundreds of children and adults every single day. Your gifts during tonight's telethon make that treatment possible, so please call now. Y'all ready to hear a little Tom Petty? y'all could see this from where you're at, but she has a string hanging off of her fiddle, fiddle bow. That means she was getting after it. I just want to take a minute and thank these wonderful, amazing, talented performers who have been coming here, Neil McCoy, Boys in the Bunkhouse, and Runaway June. We just love having them here. And this, of all years, was such a crazy, weird year. And they said yes anyway. They did it anyway. So, And I want to say thank you to the people in the audience, because it's late, and you're still here, and we appreciate you. I don't know about you, but I really think that we needed this tonight. You know, we needed to be reminded of how much good is still in the world. We needed to see that people still care about other people. And you know, I think the rehab needs to see that everybody at home and out here still believes in what we're doing and they support us. And if you haven't called in yet, I think this is the perfect time. Hopefully this next story will give you that extra little push to pick up the phone and call. Kids like Ben Raskowski, they are counting on you.
They didn't expect this little boy to even live, let alone function. I tell everybody he's my walking miracle. A miracle. That's what people have called Benjamin Roskowski from the very beginning of his fragile little life. We got Ben at three months. We got a call. He's actually from Odessa and nobody would take Ben. I agreed to go meet him in the NICU. My caseworker said she had never believed at love and first sight until I saw that little boy. <laughs> and I called my husband and I said, I'm bringing this baby home. It seemed all the odds were stacked against the tiny boy when his now adoptive mother, Maggie, came into his world. He had had a grade three brain bleed at birth. He had been rushed to Children's to have a shot put in his brain, and he had been given, the nurses said so much blood, they didn't know, they didn't think he was gonna live when he was born. So he was born three and a half months premature, positive for drugs. His family situation, there was no family situation. So uh, he really was, we didn't expect anything from Ben except what Ben was. We always just said we want him to have the best quality of life there is. And that's why they came to West Texas Rehab as soon as they were able to bring little Ben back to Abilene. That's where they would find hope, healing, and more miracles than anyone could imagine. Director of Pediatric Therapy Jo Beth Willis remembers the first time she met the family and the severity of Ben's impairments. He was massively drug exposed. When I first saw him and evaluated him uh, when he was a baby, um, he was doing nothing. He was, he was not tracking visually. He wasn't turning his head. He wasn't lifting his head off the surface. At that moment in time, when I did his evaluation, I, was, I, I thought I was looking at a child that you would see that may never walk, uh, may never move, may never eat on his own. Um, may never talk. As you can see, that is clearly not what happened. Through intense therapies multiple times a week, the little boy kept exceeding everyone's expectations, something his mother credits to the exceptional care and treatment from West Texas Rehab. The therapist here not didn't just give them the tools, they gave our family the tools to help him because we were, we were in over our heads. We had never had anything like this. And they let me sit in through every therapy session so I could watch and see. And they had patients with me when I asked the same questions week after week after week, because it, we just wanted what was best for Ben. And now I, he's starting school this year. Ooh, oh, he fell out. They gave my son a gift that I could never repay them for because they they made Ben bend. He would not be this kid if he didn't have the therapist here. And that's for sure. I know that 100%. And they're not just his therapist, they're his family. They have been part of our lives every step of the way and he loves his therapist. And clearly they love him too. Ben? He makes you want to come to work every single day. Um, and um, when I hear his, his little voice in the hallways, Joby, where are you? You know, it makes you want to, it makes you want to come to work. The rehab center right now is spending a lot of money that we did not anticipate we were, we were going to have to use. We absolutely need support, um, financial support at the rehab center. And they need it for kids like Benjamin, and moms like Maggie. There's been times that donors have put in a gap where my son did not have to miss a therapy session. That if it wasn't for that donor money, he wouldn't have gotten that. And God bless them for that because of them giving my son can be who he is today. I think the main thing is, is you just never want to give up hope on children. And the rehab hasn't given up hope. He might have been swung a different curve because of the pandemic, but we haven't given up hope about making sure that we're here for, for the kids. Making sure to give as many families as possible their very own miracles.
we were prepared for, we were gonna love him no matter what he was and what he was able to do. That was without question. That was never a question, but we always hoped that, we always hoped for more. And West Texas Rehab Center gave him more. The West Texas Rehab gave him more. You can give him more too. Pick up the phone and call right now. We're gonna take a quick pause for station identification. Okay, now we have a special treat. We have got the power couple back. They're back here and they've got a special roundup for rehab raffle and I believe we're gonna be picking some winners. So let's take it over to Jennifer and Strand Smith. Well, thanks, Bray. Did you know we're the power couple? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Just let me handle this part of the okay. power, okay? <laughs> yeah, he said, I'm afraid this key might not. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need we don't need tickets everywhere. Okay, so we have the the volunteers have given so much of their time to sell raffle tickets. The prizes were outside. There are some great prizes. So let's um, let's spin. Give some stuff let's away. spin and give some. We started the raffle last fall with one drawing per month for four months. So the original raffle tickets that were purchased had nine chances to win. Tonight we're going to start our raffle with the scope. Valued at one thousand dollars, a if, rifle scope. If I pull my name out of here, I've got nothing up my sleeves. Okay, yeah, if I pull. We'll, we'll show the camera. I won't <laughs> believe it till I see it. I'm not even gonna look. Okay, here, I'll let you read. All right, it. not your name. Stacy Long is the winner of the rifle scope. Okay. okay. Stacy. All right, number two, the big green egg in nest, valued at fourteen hundred dollars. Earl Hill. Okay. Earl Hill, you Dang. won a green egg. <sighs> yeah, okay. Uh, this is the one Strand really wants. A Louis Vuitton never full monogram purse valued at $1,600. That's just what I need, another purse. That's right. <laughs> I know how Vanna White feels now, so. Here you go. <laughs> Ryan Edmiston. Ryan Edmiston, okay. okay. I hope you're keeping track. I hope I don't get these mixed up. Okay. Now we have Kano's jewelry, a diamond hoop ear, set of diamond hoop earrings in 14 karat white gold, valued at $3,500. Liz Albert mm. won some diamond hoop earrings. All right. And now the custom party trailer. We saw it in the foyer earlier. It has a grill, a propane fryer, swivel seats. It is amazing. It is valued at $5,000, Strand. I need this, but I don't know what I do no, with it. No, you don't. <laughs> All right. Ricky Hoffman has won the party trailer. So, awesome. Thank you guys all who bought a ticket. There are lots of tickets in here and this money will go to such a good cause have you been, as you've been seeing tonight. Now, let's go to the boys in the bunkhouse.
Another old classic pop song. Right now we're going to do something that's going to introduce the band members to you. Back on drums, Kevin Taylor. Jim Pack on bass guitar. On piano over here, Wayne Glesson. On guitar and fiddle, Steve Story. On fiddle and mandolin, Jason Roberts. And this song is featuring our sax player, Larry Reed. Glad you're here. Okay, because this is the rundown I have right now. You've got a CGA, a CLT, a CRT, a CRAT, which is also known as a CRAT, a CRUT, a NIMCRUT, a PIF, a NICRUT, a FLIPCRUT, a DAP. What the heck is going on? All right, so Chad, you're telling me pre you're prepared to tell your donors that those are all acronyms for estate planning tools that could help them, right? You know what those are, old man. Okay, then I want you to just give me one. One that will increase my income and, if possible, give me a little tax benefit. Fine. I got gotcha. you. Let's take the CGA, or a charitable gift annuity. It's the simplest and can be both beneficial to you and the charity. In this case, West Texas Rehab. Give it to me straight, Big Daddy. Let me see how you do. All right. So, let's say you have some non-income producing asset and you'd like to sell it. But it's worth a whole lot more than you paid for it. So, I had owed capital gains. Exactly. But if you give it to the rehab to set up your CGA, we don't pay the tax when we sell it. And we use the money to fund the CGA. Then you receive payments for up to two people for the rest of your lives. You'll even receive a tax deduction. But that's something we need to sit down together in my office so I can show you exactly how much and why. That's it? 
Yep, for the most part, and it doesn't even involve attorneys because it's that simple. We can do it right here in the office. And I'm guessing the older a person is, the better rate they get on their annuity? Yep, and it's also extremely important that whatever charity they give to you, it's financially strong enough to honor the payments because there's no government guarantee. West Texas Rehab, we can do that. So how'd I do, old man? Eh, you did great. And you, my friends, you always need to discuss these financial illustrations with your tax and financial advisors. They can help you make an informed decision, taking into consideration all the relevant factors. So give one of our foundation guys a call. We would love to visit with you. I noticed that when I would go and have lunch with friends, I couldn't understand a lot of what, that, what was being said in the conversation, especially if it was in a restaurant and it was kind of noisy. And I found myself kind of leaning in and by the time I got done, I was halfway across the table trying to hear what was being said. Since I have my hearing aids, I hear much better. The word what doesn't come out of my mouth so much as it used to. Uh, I'm not being accused of having selective hearing anymore <laughs> where, I, where I could hear it sometimes and not hear it the other time. So I've become a better listener. It's nice to be able to communicate. And in the evenings, a lot of times we're watching television. And so we can both enjoy the programs at the same level of volume, uh, which is nice. Uh, I've played golf with my hearing aids in, uh, and I've played with them out. Uh, it uh, a lot depends on how windy it is that particular day, but even on windy days, I've noticed that the hearing aids really aren't a big distraction when I'm playing. Well, my experience has been with with Connie Stevens over the audiology department. Uh, it's it's been like family. You come to the audiology department, just all the ladies there are true professionals. You, you go in, your appointment's at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, doesn't matter what your appointment time is. You're not sitting there for an hour waiting to get in. They schedule you, they get you in, they get you out. They take really good care of you and everyone is just as nice as they can be. They work with you until you get the right hearing aids. Then they make sure that you know how to use them. Well, I'd certainly recommend them uh, to everyone. In fact, I have recommended to some of my friends that uh, to come here. And uh, a lot of people don't know that West Texas Rehab has an audiology department. With all the good that the West Texas Rehab does for the community of Abilene, uh, folks, you need to, all I can say is you, you need to give the audiology department a, a chance. Folks, a special thanks to Red Chain Feeds, the sponsor of this hour of tonight's Telethon. Matter of fact, we're less than an hour from wrapping things up tonight. We haven't checked our total lately. Here we go. Let's see where we stand right now. We are at, well, look at this, over a million, one million, one hundred seventy thousand, one hundred forty-five dollars Thank you very much. That makes 26 years in a row we have topped one million dollars, and we are still adding to it. And we certainly would appreciate your support. We have some wonderful entertainers who have been a part of our show tonight. Uh, Neil, come here. I, I got to share something with you. No, I, this is not planned. But come on in here. It's I want to. Not planned. I don't do not planned I don't know. Well. Stay right there. there. See, see okay. that green spot? I got, I got this. No, it doesn't matter. See the green spot right there? <laughs> Thank you. I know you. Stand over there. Now, I wanted to share something. I was on the phone with my wife, Karen, tonight, and we talked about this before because she knew I was going to be working with you tonight. She said, that, you know, there are certain entertainers, artists, that when you hear their voice, when you hear them on record, you instantly know who they are. She compared you to the easy recognizability of Sinatra, Elvis, that oh. sort of thing. She said, when you hear Neil McCoy's voice, you know it is Neil McCoy. And I wanted to share that with you with all sincerity. We joke around a lot, but we're very serious. Wow. That's where y'all are supposed to clap. Yeah. What? What? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt was in the butt, huh? Oh. Oh, you want, he wants you to go over there now. Oh, you go over there now? Yeah. And we'll, I've been married for 40 years. You've been married 40 years? Okay, get over there. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm coming up on 50 this year. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And congratulations to you as well. Okay, time now for the. Well, I'll tell you what. Do the big band thing, will you? Yeah. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, here again, Neil McCoy. You'll get a kick out of this. Hi, everybody. I'm glad you're still here. Thank you. I'm glad y'all are still watching. Still got a lot of great music, a lot of great money to raise. Thank you for being here. We're going to do something off of my big band album, which is my favorite music maybe ever in the world. I know I'm not supposed to say that since I'm a country music entertainer. Maestro. My story is much too sad to be told, but practically everything leaves me totally cold. The only exception I know is a case when I'm out on a quiet spree, fighting vainly the old ennui. Then I suddenly turn and see your fabulous face. I get no kick from champagne, beer, alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. So tell me why should it be true hey. that I get a kick out of you? Some people go for cocaine I'm sure that if I took even one sniff it would bore me terrifically too but I get a kick out of you I get a kick every time see you standing there before me I get a kick though it's clear to me hey you obviously do not adore me I get no kick in a plane Some guy in the sky is my idea of nothing to do. But I get a kick out of you. Nice round of applause for this band, y'all. We have tried to give you a little bit of everything that we're about musically, so we are all over the board. Uh, and also, what we do for a, from a philanthropic kind of standpoint, my wife and I have a foundation. We started over in the Northeast Texas area, Longview, where we live, to help children with life-threatening illnesses or serious illnesses, them and their families with expenses. And we've been doing it for about 26 years. Just had our 26-year anniversary. And we have raised, just in our home area, a little over $10 million to help children and their families. And it's something we're extremely proud of. So we understand all the work and the efforts that go into something like this, all the volunteers, the camera people. Uh, we, don't, we don't have near this, 
this setup at, at our place, but this is magnificent. And they all come together and have great hearts and great spirits to try to raise money. And you all come in here, and you people at home take part in this thing, and, uh, and it's, it's just a huge success every year because of folks like you. I, I mentioned in my big band album, uh, the name of the album is You Don't Know Me. It is a song. It's an album that I wanted to cut my entire life. I, I think it's music that you have to understand what you're singing about. It's stuff you had to interpret, phrase, deliver. You know, it's not anything like, slam, bam, I'm feeling all right. That ain't bad. But this stuff is the stuff that you had to understand what you were singing about. And this is one of the greatest songs that probably 90, I'm going to grab my music stand, 90% of you have never heard. Uh, it's called That's All. I thought it's on our album. It's my favorite song. And it would have made a great country song because of the simplicity of the lyrics. But it's one of the prettiest songs you ever hear. Hope you still feel that way when I'm done with it. I can only give you love that lasts forever And the promise to be near each time you call And the only heart I own for you and you alone That's all That's all can only give you country walks in springtime and a hand to hold when leaves begin to fall and a love whose burning light will warm the winter's night that's all that's all All I have are these arms to enfold you And the love time can never destroy If you're wondering what I'm asking in return to you You'll be glad to know Say it's me that you'll adore For now and evermore That's all That's all
on, y'all. Let me hear you around a nice round of applause for these guys, will you? That is as good a music as it gets. Now, they asked me, we're running a little, running a little ahead of time. They just made a mistake. Now, they, they asked me. They said, Neil, can you do one more in this set? I said, yeah, but you ain't going to like it. And they said, well, we got we to gotta take a little more time. So here, here's what we can do. Y'all act like if you're at home, yesterday I do some history stuff on front of my little old Pledge of Allegiance every morning. Yesterday was the 1963 on that day. Yesterday, whatever, July 22nd. This song, well, part of this song was number one in the country, the, the, the uh, Ballad of Jed Clampett. Now, we've been stirred up. Everybody having a deal. Well, that sucked. I know there ain't as many as in here we like. Y'all can be a little bit louder now. And y'all at home, y'all y'all suck too. Deal. Oh, uh, excuse me. That ain't part of it. Deo, Deo, Daylight, come and we want to go home. Daylight, come and we want to go home. Clap your hands. Daylight, come and we want to go home. Whoop, whoop. Daylight, come and we want to go home. Hey, Mr. Tally Man, Tally Me Banana. Said, Daylight, come and we want to go home. Can't hear you. All you people. Come and play on the piano. Daylight, come man, we wanna go. Ha! All right, all right, all right. All right, everybody sing with us. I'm coming in. Well, come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. At the end one day, he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubble leg crew. First thing you know, old oh, Jed's a millionaire. The kid folks said, Jim. He said, California is a place you want to be. So they loaded up the truck. Beverly. Come on, Tom. Come on, Tom. Give us a hello. I'm trying to shorten it. I'm extending it, but shortening it. Weird. Coming back to you. Everybody sing. Now y'all know what we singing. So then go, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. This is what we singing. Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. Then one day he was shooting at some food. Second verse, give me a little more energy. Hey, well, the first thing you know, oh, the Ken folks said, Jed, away from there. He said, California is a place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck. Hip-hopper, you don't stop knocking to the bang, bang, boogie, sit up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. I said, what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. I said, me, him, 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 gonna try and move your feet. I said, I am one to make a butter, I'm two friends along. And next on the mic is my man, hey, come on, hey, sing this song. Y'all clap right here. Yeah. See, that's it. I would drop the mic, but it costs too much money. Blake Plumbing has been blessed to serve your community and wants to thank you for your support. Because of you choosing Black Plumbing, you made it possible for Black Plumbing to grow and give back to you and your community. Black Plumbing enjoys providing the best plumbing service possible while also being engaged as a community partner with volunteerism and financial support where we can all thrive together. We ask you to check out their services and their commitment to the community at blackplumbing.com, building a stronger community. Our annual clay shoots are some of our largest fundraisers here at the West Texas Rehab Center. 
Here are Clayton Nance for Abilene and Kurt Clear for San Angelo to tell you a little bit more about them. <laughs> Every year we use sporting clays as a foundation way to raise money for the charity of West Texas Rehab. Um, and that money goes towards all kinds of amazing children, adults, um, people just in need. So I've worked closely just as a friendship with David Williams and several of the board members on the rehab. Just ideas of ways to grow the participation in the West Texas Rehab Top Gun Shoot. Every year I know that we've hit over 500 shooters have participated um, with goals of 600 and I know that we've hovered around the 600 mark every year. Another event that we've added to the Top Gun Classic in the last couple years is the Make a Break. Pretty fun to watch, it's under the lights, um, pretty neat thing that we've added. You know, I'd like to encourage anybody to come out and shoot the Top Gun Classic. You don't have to be a pro shooter or even experienced shooter. Um, bring your family, bring your friends, bring a shotgun and just have, have good fun for a great cause. So our family has personal ties to the West Texas Rehab because we've relied on them several times with our daughter Riley. Uh, 18 months, she was having trouble developing walking skills and we went to the West Texas Rehab to have custom ankle braces made for her, which assisted her in walking. And again, we were assisted with the rehab um, pre-K, kinder, and first grade. She took speech therapy lessons provided by West Texas Rehab. It's a great group of people. Um, and if you've never had a chance to visit the rehab, just to see all the things that they do for these families and for these kids, um, it's quite amazing. And I encourage you to do that. Frank Carraway was a very, very, very special man, especially in San Angelo. Uh, he, was, he was in the oil industry. He was a pioneer in the oil industry. He owned a drilling company. He actually was my mentor and actually put me in business, as he did a lot of other people. And he was a great supporter of the West Texas Rehab, and that was one of his favorite charities. So in his honor, when we started a claybird shoot 14 years ago, we decided, Ellen Brown decided that Frank, we needed to honor Frank, and that's the reason that it's the Frank Carraway Classic. Well, I have always, I may not be a great outdoorsman, but I'd certainly enjoy the outdoors. I've, I've been, you know, I, I love shooting clay targets. I've done it for a long time. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great sport, and the rehab's a great charity and a, something that everybody needs to be involved in. And if we can do something to raise something for the rehab, you know, I'm all for it. All right, gang, we're a little over a half hour from closing things out. Let's see where our toast stands right now. We reached 1.1 last time. We're at 1.3. 1,319,181. That is a wonderful number considering everything we've been through this year. Congratulations on another successful year, and we'll still add to that, okay? Now, let's go back to center stage here. Uh, a group CMT called the next women of country. I love these ladies. Here again, Runaway June, everybody. Never felt this valley 
Thank you. Thank you so much. It's hard to believe that only five years ago this month, our little group, Runaway June, came together in Nashville. Um, we're just three American girls from different backgrounds, California, Florida, Tennessee, um, and we share a love of family values, music, um, and uh, we're just so excited to be here. Um, Tonight to support West Texas Rehab Center, it's been incredible. Thank you for having us. We certainly have been impressed with the work of the center. It's so deserving of your support, so please call in your gifts now, and uh, we'll sing a Dwight Yoakam song from you, for you from our album.
Wonderful job. Okay, I, I want you to know that uh, when I find myself standing here with three beautiful women, I, I have a problem with social distancing. I just want you to know <laughs> that, okay? But uh, anyway, uh, Natalie, welcome Thank to you. Abilene. And uh, Naomi and Jennifer, welcome back. Thank nice you. to have you with us. Um, I know that uh, this has been an odd year <laughs> for everybody. You came on as the new member of the group. Welcome aboard. Uh, I understand it was a no-brainer for both of, both of you as far as decision-making to join the group, right? It absolutely was. And, and to have something to be able to start a new chapter yeah. and something that brings positive energy into all of our lives, for us, that was such a blessing in this weird year. Wonderful. And blessings to both of you <laughs> on the personal standpoint. I'll begin with Jennifer, who was married, what, two weeks ago? I think so, yeah. You think so? <laughs> Hello, been a testing. <laughs> Recently, <laughs> congratulations, is all I know. congratulations to you. Thank so, you. And I guess you caught the bug too, huh? I caught the bug, yeah. Yeah. She beat me to the altar though. We always do things at the same time, which we got unengaged together and then engaged oh, together. You don't want to hear that story now. <laughs> okay. Maybe next <laughs> That's time. a true story. But it's wonderful to have all of you here. Thank you again for supporting the rehab center. Be safe out on the road and hopefully things will get back to normal here real soon, okay? Thank you. So Thank you. Very good. Us. Thanks again, ladies. One, don't go anywhere because these ladies are coming back in a few minutes to help us wrap up Rehab 2021. Right now, it's time to catch up with a former Rehab Center patient who's thankful for treatment that changed his life. It's what we call, Where Are They Now? I had a, a bone disease in my left hip, and it's called leg perthes. And that happened around five years old, and uh, my mother noticed me limping. And therefore, uh, she took me uh, to get checked out, and it comes to three, find out I had this bone disease. It skips every third generation in my family, and uh, so I had to spend some time in the hospital. I had to, I was in traction, and I uh, had to wear braces in my, between my legs. Had a bar between my legs, so it was uh, kind of awkward to walk. My legs spread out, but um, I uh, was treated in the hospital, and then I was released and sent home to rehab. And the uh, place that we went was uh, West Texas Rehab. But the time at rehab did change my life for the better. Uh, knowing it back then, I didn't know. I was just another hospital type setting that I had to go into. But then quickly realized this is not a hospital. This is kind of a place for exercise, a place for uh, real world learning in that sense. So it tempered me as an adult to go through that process. So it humbles you because uh, you have such a overwhelming disease here that you may not be able to walk and so you really start counting your blessings at that point so yeah it was uh, it was hard and uh, but uh, as an instructor now I feel I have more empathy for the students I have students with uh, physical impairments that come through the classroom and I just treat them like normal because that's what I wanted to be treated like when I was that age I'm Tony Blair I'm the instructor here at Angelo State, senior instructor here at Angelo State, and I'm director of the radio station. Ekdal Nelson makes real estate happen. We provide world-class service by living out our company's core values. Honesty. Commitment. Relationships. Knowledge. Creativity. Loyalty. We thrive on providing the extra service that others will not. We work harder to understand your desires and to get the deal closed. Come experience the Ekdal Edge. All right, all right, all right. Y'all still with me? Everybody with me? We're going to give you one more shot at this. Here she comes, just a walking down the street, singing. Clapping her hands and stomping her feet, singing. She looked good, she looked fine. She looked good, she looked fine, and she nearly blew my mind. Here she come, just a walking down the street, singing. I just want to see if I can get your attention again, y'all. Hey, we thank you for making this song the most played song in country music. In 1994 I woke up this morning My head fell dense I splashed through with water Trying to make it make sense Stumbled to the kitchen 
kitchen. She was standing at the sink. All she had to do was just to give me that away. Well, slam, bam, I'm feeling all right. Troubles take a hike. You blink of an eye. Don't need a psychoanalyzer, have a step drink. All she's got to do is just give me that away. We got a new crowd come in. 1130 at night. This is going to be my last song of the night. And then I'm going to go over with Charlie. Say goodnight. I think we'll get Runaway June back up here. I grew up in Jacksonville, Texas. Went to First Christian Church all my life. My mother made sure we did. My brother now is the music director of our church. My sister is the pastor at our church in Jacksonville, Texas. Our mom passed away almost three years ago. And I didn't say, I couldn't sing at the funeral. My brother and sister wanted me to, and they sing better than me. So I said, y'all just sing. But my brother and I sang at Graveside. And we sang this song. And I hope you'll sing it with me. I got it. Oh, Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder consider all the world's I see the stars and I hear the rolling thunder and the power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my god how great thou art then sings my soul Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior.
dear God to Thee. How great Thou art. How great Thou art. Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh. yeah, you don't have to bring the mic. You do have to bring the mic. Come on over here. Okay. It's nice to see you. Not too close. Thank you, Charlie. That, that was, uh, that's a wonderful way for you to close out your segment of the show. It Thank really you is. Thank uh, I have to ask a personal question, if you don't mind. Uh, I've known you for a long time. I know you're the kind of guy that can't sit still. You, <laughs> you can't be quiet. And, you ha and last year, you couldn't tour. That's right. What uh, was it like at your house? Uh, for my wife, is terrible. I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> we've been married 40 years, just had our 40-year anniversary, and, and this is the most that we've seen each other maybe in 40 years. <laughs> so so if, how'd it if, work if out? my stuff is still at home when I get home from this trip, well, it'll be a marriage. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, well, honestly, as an entertainer, over the course of a year, you're yeah. gone roughly how many days out of the year? We're still on the road about 200 days a year right on the road. So to, to only be gone about maybe 25 days, it is a real crunch, and, and uh, not not just on marriage. I mean, we, we have worked through a lot of things in our lives, and we still love each mm -hmm. other dearly. So our marriage is, is not on the rocks at all. But all the people that are going through, and, and then add into that without any work or any income coming in, you know, it's a little tougher on people, and people are going through tough tough times right now. What do you see as far as uh, getting back on the road this coming year? Uh, you know, we've got a couple of things booked, but... It just matters if they stay around. You know, they'll they'll put some stuff on the books, and then they're allowed to just mm -hmm. pull out from under you. Well, I understand that, and I and I know that one reason you selected to be a part of this is because you know that they're going to be safe. Going to they're going to be safe. Right. This place is always going to be here. They know from experience how to make sure everything is safe. So they've been able to do and, that. And this they've year. done a great job. They've got they've got a lot of great people back there that are working to make sure you're wearing your mask and washing your hands, and, mm -hmm. and all the people. And and I know I'm preaching to the choir because you've been. You've been running this rodeo for a long time. Uh, they are just on top of their game. They, they, they do everything right here. They really are. Now, keep in mind, before midnight, we still have the auction underway over there. So if you haven't yeah. made your bid on a particular item you've had your eye on, or if you want to just go in and say, oh, well, I like that, put a bid on it, <laughs> because uh, it's going to close out right around midnight. They'll get things wrapped up over there and add to our total. And we will have another total for you before we wrap things up here at the end of the show, OK? And as a matter of fact, we've, uh, we're getting the ladies set over here to kind of help us close out. I think they're ready to go. Okay. Stick around here. We're going to bring oh, on God. one more time to help us wrap up 2021. Runaway June, everybody. Come on, ladies. Reynolds wrap on rather ears. A TV tray back in the day we watched the wonder years. Wood panel doors. We wore out our old jeans and were faded from the store in that old couch. We pulled the cushions off and we found better seats. We go crazy, we thought we were. Our summer. 
Thank you, thank you so much. Well, we just want to thank you guys so much and thank you to West Texas Rehab for having us for the second time. We feel so honored. And how about the bands before us and Neil McCoy, he is just unbelievable. We oh. feel so blessed thank to be you. in everyone here's presence. So thank you all so much from the bottom of our hearts. Trying to unfall apart And I've been thinking that to me all night To be a real good start Well, I called a couple friends But they all say they're staying in So I guess I'm going out on my own I might be heartbroken But that don't mean I gotta stay home I see you up there I, I,
please stay right there, my goodness. All right, my friends, as we get ready to wrap things up, we're gonna check our total one more time here as the band plays on. Look at this, 1,444,274 is our total right now as we get ready to wrap things up. Come on, everybody come on in here because we want to thank all of our guests tonight. This is wonderful. Thanks to you and our audience here at the Abilene Convention Center. Those of you watching at home on your television or following us online. And a final word of sincere thanks to our many generous friends and donors tonight for your support throughout the year. From our family at Rehab 2021 to your family, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Good night. We'll see you next year for Rehab 2022. Stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.